What is happening, people? My name's Scott Wilkinson. I'm a professional body piercer. I've been piercing since about 1994, so uh, I've been around the block a couple times. Anyways, what we're doing here today is we're going to answer a bunch of your piercing questions. So if you have anything piercing or body art related, um, ask some questions. Be as thorough as you possibly can, and I'm going to answer them as best as my experience can allow me to. Now, uh, behind the scenes, we have Nova, so uh, everyone say hi to Nova. Hi, everybody. Cool. Or at least Nova say hi to everyone here. So <laughs> do we have anyone in the chats yet? I know we just uh, jumped in and we didn't really tell anyone we're doing this. So surprise. <laughs> uh, not quite yet. Oh, wait. Yes. It looks like we do. We do have a few people that hopped in. No questions yet, but uh, we are just getting started. Perfect. Perfect. So um, again, if you come into the chat here, let us know where you're from. Um, let us know if you're a piercer, or how many piercings you have. I just love hearing all these things and seeing where people are from and uh, what they've been through, because I know I've been through a lot. I'm sure you have too. And we're just trying to make this as easy as possible. So, so Nova, what's new with you, man? Any new piercings? Um, yes, actually. So Scott, uh, Scott pierced my nipple at a 12 gauge uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. Everything's healing up pretty good for you. It honestly easiest, like easiest heal I've had on a nipple piercing. Rad. I love uh, that. I and love I, that. I think it must be because Kelsey and I were theorizing about this because she recently re pierced her nipple too, and she was saying she's gotten like no crusties, no irritation, like absolutely nothing. And uh, and I I have experienced the same thing, and we were kind of wondering if it was like because the the fistula is probably like already mostly there. Um, because it's a repierce, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it was like because I had it for such a long time and it healed, and then I just left it out when I tried to stretch it. So. Um, that is a good point because we went in the same spot so i mean the fistula is probably small so there's probably you're only probably healing like half of it because half of it was there and we just might have opened up part of the other so yeah yeah interesting. super interesting and i know the upgraded needles too using the yeah you know, kwami needles kwami needles they're insane they insane. are magical they're so sharp and i think that causes less trauma which causes less crusties i've had a couple other customers say like is it normal i don't have any crusties i'm like you probably do there's wiping off in the shower or you're not getting as many so yep yep yeah, same, same. I've been getting very minimal, but uh, yeah, now we have quite a few people and a few questions. All right. Who, who do we got in the room here? Uh, we've got CTS Diva says, yes, I'm here. Cheers. Um, we've got our friend uh, Manan from India. Uh, he said, as an update, he has stretched his ears to a double zero gauge. Congratulations. That's an awesome size. I think that's it the is. best size because, I mean, most options come in around a double zero. Between True. double zero and half inch, I think, so. Yeah, it's at least at least the most versatile. Yeah, uh, he said yeah. that he started stretching around December twenty second, uh, twenty twenty three, and okay. here he is on uh, March fourth. My goal size of double zero won't stop. Um, planning to stretch him to fourteen millimeters. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> that happens. You keep going, and going. So. Oh yeah, slow and low, slow and low. That's yep. A, that's the best way to do it. Uh, hi, hi to Anna. Hi Anna. Anna Washington. Uh, we've got Kaylee here from the UK. What's up, um, Kaylee? And Anna is from Washington and has uh, seven piercings. Seven piercings. Awesome. Awesome. Heck yeah. Just getting started. It, it's so crazy. It's like, you're like, oh, I just got one or two. And like, wait a minute. You start counting. I'm like, they add up pretty quick. They really, really do. Yes, they do. Especially, yep. especially if you're like us and you have to pair everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twice so, as fast. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, hi from Emily. Uh, she hey, said Emily. that she uh, she just got her tenth ring stacked in her septum today. I remember we were talking either last week or ten weeks ago rings. About that. That's pretty epic. That's awesome. That's pretty. You know what we're talking about is like the septum piercing. A lot of people put multiple rings in there. It's called stacking. And uh, Emily has ten rings in there. That's a pretty decent number. It's That's a, a, I bet your yeah, nose is looking pretty full. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a great way to to stretch your septum too. Um, you know, and if anyone else has stacked their septum, I'm kind of curious, does everyone stick to like the same size rings or do you vary sizes like diameter wise? Do you do some like seven millimeters, some nine millimeters, maybe, you know, even smaller or bigger beyond that. Um, what I've seen is like generally like two sizes kind of go back and forth, but yeah, I don't know. What do you guys do? Let me know. I always like it when there's a smaller diameter in the front and it goes back, uh, like slightly bigger the whole way and it looks like it tapers back. Yes, yes. Those are really cool, especially when using those forward-facing gems and you can start mm -hmm. seeing all the different layers of the gems. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Kaylee from the UK said she has 15 piercings. 15 piercings. Sweet. Love it. Uh, Ruru, very lovely day to you all. No questions, just coming to say hi from Hungary. Excellent. Welcome into the chat. Glad you're here. Yep. We've got a hello from Cannibal Wizard. <laughs> What's up, Cannibal Wizard? Love it. <laughs> 
Um, and here we've got a question from, uh, I believe it's Michael. Uh, should I downsize my anti-eyebrow jewelry? Ah, okay. It's, it, if you were pierced with a curved barbell, a lot of times they reject and you're going to need to have a little bit of bar because it kind of goes back and forth. Um, but if you're pierced with a surface bar, um, if you have to downsize, that means it's probably rejecting out and you might need to lose it. Anti-eyebrows are really, really hard heels. Um, and there's not much you can do. Sometimes there's different uplifts. So sometimes people put a longer part that sticks out further. And sometimes you can get a little shorter, but typically that skin's so thin, we generally do the smallest uplift possible. So you probably can't downsize. It might've just rejected out a little bit for you. Bummer. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Jeevan St. Clair. Uh, forgive me if I'm butchering names today. <laughs> I've uh, butchered names since I've had this channel. <laughs> I apologize to everyone. Oh, shout out. Uh, sorry, Era. It's Era, not Anna. My okay, <laughs> Era. I just can't see. <laughs> Oops. Um, hey, Scott. Uh, I would like to get my conch punched. Uh, does it affect hearing? We Yeah, we talked about that not that long ago, right? We have. And um, I'm going to say the answer is a solid yes. Now, to what degree is completely different from person to person. Um, I've seen people with completely removed ears before, and I, I, I don't know how they heal. But I mean, it's, it's like... It's like a little uh, satellite dish. It's collecting stuff. And I have a little hole through mine. I don't know if you can see, see that or not. But I don't know. I blame being a musician and going to a lot of concerts without earplugs doing more damage to my hearing than that little hole there. But if you went big, like if you had a half-inch plug or something bigger in there and it's hollow, I imagine it really would make a difference. And what, what's your opinion, Nova? Uh, yeah, I pretty much the same basically that uh probably something smaller wouldn't really have too much of a of an effect but the bigger you go the more drastic the effect yeah yeah for sure i'm really curious like like how if someone went really big like three quarter inch plug where their whole conch is removed like what percentage actually goes away i can guarantee it's some but how much yeah i don't know yeah. i'm sure like you say i'm sure it depends person to person yep. too uh, so, I mean, if you're like a studio musician or like an engineer in a recording studio, you probably don't want to be doing that because every little bit makes a difference. That's true. But yeah. probably if you get them punched at like a 14 gauge or something, you'd be fine. Yeah, that wouldn't do anything. It's just when you can see that big hole going through the middle. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, awesome. We've got a question from uh, Jennifer. Uh, Hi, Scott. Healing a forward helix for two months with a slowly shrinking bump. Uh, Jennifer, I, I empathize. I'm currently also healing a forward helix. Yeah, there. Uh, is it common for a forward helix to be pierced with 18 gauge? Yes, that's what I pierce. Um, it's it's weird because normally I have a standard for 16 or larger for almost all cartilage, except for nostrils and forward helixes. Forward helixes, I always do an 18 just because there's not a lot of room there and it can really distort push like because we're not removing tissue and you make a crescent decision and push the tissue out of the way so you don't have that much room to put that much tissue to push so therefore the 18 gauge generally works really well the 18 gauge also supports a two and a half millimeter disc on the back a lot of times when we're doing cartilage piercings it's like a four or maybe even sometimes a five millimeter disc on the back and that big disc sometimes sticks out on a forward helix so the 18 with a smaller for uh smaller disc on the inside does work well for forward helixes. So that's generally what I do. Some piercers swear by 16 only, and, you know, it's their prerogative. But I've had fairly good luck with 18 gauge. Um, same thing with nostrils. People don't want generally big clunky stuff like my nose, you know. Um, but 18 gauge generally works well. I'm not sure. Like, I think just because of the amount of movement on the outside where the 16 gauge is going to support that piercing much better, less chance of a bump. But the forward helix is pretty protected. It's on the inside. It's almost like a tragus, but I still do tragus as a 16. All right. Good one. Yes. Good question. Uh, excuse me. Um, we have a question from, uh, hi, first from Karen. Uh, hey, Karen, Karen Rojas. Uh, hey, Mr. Scott. Hi, Nova. Uh, I'm from North Carolina. I have my lip, two, uh, my lip, two nostril piercings, uh, navel piercing, and nipples. So Nice. You're, get, you're getting up there. Yes, Love you it. are. <laughs> yes. You got my favorite ones, the nipple piercings. I, I'm going to have my nipples pierced forever. I need to. I only have my left one done, which I don't know why, but it just feels right to me. So and that's what it's all about. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a very balanced person. I wasn't happy until I had both. But, you know, if one's what makes you happy, you do what makes you happy in life. Love it. Yep. Love it. Uh, I love this name uh, from Twists, Turns, and Tarot. Uh, <laughs> hello, Scott. I'm in Oklahoma. I got my septum pierced yesterday. Do you have any aftercare tips? Yes, I do. Um, 
keep the crusties off a of septum piercing. Um, I know they're gonna stick to there, but you wanna use a wound wash spray. A wound wash spray is basically a sterile saline solution. Um, and you're gonna spray both sides of your septum to, to soak those crusties or those little scabs that are stuck to your piercing or your jewelry. And generally a paper towel should wipe those things off after a few minutes. Now, if your jewelry spinning or rotating, you're pulling crusties inside, you need to keep it clean so it doesn't spin or rotate. And a lot of times if you have a circular barbell, the one with the two beads on there, if you can flip your jewelry up, that doesn't allow the piercing to move, won't pull the crusties inside. And I personally think heals it a lot nicer. Sometimes the jewelry needs to be adjusted so it fits in your nose. So if you flip it up and it pinches or it's hurting, it probably needs to be adjusted if you want to go that route. But they generally heal pretty quick as long as you're not spinning and rotating and you're keeping the crusties off. Oh, and check your beads if you have that circular barbell because those beads will come unthreaded. Because we talk and eat, there's a lot of movement and they will come undone. So this is a notorious one for the bead coming off. So check it on a daily basis if you have the threaded jewelry in there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Great piercing. Yeah, it is. Um, awesome. Let's see. Uh, this one is from Fran, Bristol, UK. Uh, two to four inch stretched, uh, maybe 11 retired. So I guess she has two to four. Stretched eight, earlobes, four, probably. Yeah, stretched earlobes. Sweet. That's awesome. You don't see that much anymore. Back in the 90s, we saw a lot more where people kind of graduated, had multiple plugs in their ears. Nowadays, it, it just, you know what? I, let's call it. Let's make that happen, people. Let's make the multiple stretched ears come back. Yeah, they're cool, it is, for sure. You don't have to go big on the second one, but, you know, if you had like a half inch or a double zero, having like an eight gauge and not small little tunnel right up there, it's a really cool look. Absolutely. Yes. So, and I haven't really done it yet. For those of you drinking coffee, water, soda, beer, whatever it might be, cheers to you. Um, I got different Dutch Brothers today because the one I normally go to, they're having construction, so I'd go to a different one. It tastes a little different, but it's still pretty darn yummy. <laughs> cheers to y'all. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Dutch Brothers. <laughs> still <laughs> thank looking, you. Still everyone. looking for that sponsorship. <laughs> yes. Uh, free sponsorship. I should, yeah, I should yeah, get free should, coffee. Hint, yeah, hint. We, there you go. <laughs> um, from uh, Piercing by Lee. Hey guys, I've successfully I've uh, 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 sorry I've successfully stretched my pe previously sewn up ears. Sorry, that was hard for me to get out. Uh, I used to have them at two inches, and now I'm settling on 14 millimeters. Uh, I don't know what that is in gauge, though. Uh, I believe that's nine sixteenths. Yeah, it's yeah, little yeah, awesome. So I'm just kind of curious, like two inches and then you just got sick of them or was it the comments or what was it or were they just not as healthy as you wanted them to be um but i totally understand that when like i had my my earlobes removed i totally missed them i didn't want to remove mine mine were necrotic and i didn't have a choice so i just did that um i actually have a video on that whole process and it was pretty pretty traumatic so you should check this out if it's it's on my playlist so um but yeah 14 millimeters Cool, that's a good size. Now I'm gonna let you know that the ears naturally stretch pretty easily. That old scar tissue does keep stretching, so don't get in that trap and get yourself back up to the two inches. It's <laughs> easy to do. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, let's see, we've got a question from Gerardo. What's up, uh, Gerardo? Hey, Scott, question on smiley piercings. Yes. I, uh, I have my piercing, or, or it is never straight. Uh, it's always crooked, I'm constantly having to adjust it. How come septum piercings stay straight and my smiley doesn't? Um, the support of the tissue. A smiley is a real thin web that's easily moved around. Um, if you're saying straight, as far as like the beads being straight, switch to a clicker. You know, if it's healed up enough, like more than like maybe a month and a half, two months, switch to a clicker or a seam ring where there's no bead and you don't have to worry about it being straight. Now, if you're saying where it's like sways left and right, sometimes that just happens, you know, um, there's a lot more movement in this area than there is for a septum. The septum is able to freely hang the smiley one. You know, your lips move when we talk, so it's easy to kind of shift things back and forth. Uh, I've never had my smiley pierced, but I can only understand how frustrating that would be never having it being, being able to be straight. That's why I probably couldn't have the smiley piercing too, so. Yeah, but yeah, true. that'd be my guess is the friction kind of moving around. And if it's the bead thing, switch to a clicker. You don't want beads in there anyways. The more you pull it away from your gums and your teeth, the better off you're going to be, the longer you're going to be able to have your piercing. And for a smiley piercing, for those of you who don't know, that's just that web of skin between your gums and your lip. There's a little tiny web that hangs down, and you pierce that, and it hangs. It's a pretty cool piercing, but they can do a lot of damage. So I'll pull super up a picture. Important, super, super important to keep your eye on it. Um, 
Again, I have a video, and if you watch my video, you'll see a lot of the different types of erosion and things that can happen. So that's why you want to get rid of the beads. Um, as far as the smiley piercing goes, it's one of the most painless ones. And as you can see, they're just gorgeous. You big smile. You can see the one right up in the center, how the beads look off to the side. If that, no, go, yep. If you switch to a clicker where the ring goes all the way around, it's going to look centered and straight most of the time. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to point this out too. You see those fangs down there? Go down a little bit lower, Nova. Those. Never get this garbage. This is garbage. I can't tell you how many times I've seen these rip smileys out. Your smiley is very delicate, soft tissue. And when you put those fangs in there, they're going to get caught. They're going to move around. And it just rips it right out. Literally rips it out. It's not painful, but uh, the damage is done, you know? So, yeah. That's a smiley piercing. They're frustrating. A lot of times they're very short-lived piercing. A lot of times people have them a year or less before damage and things like that start happening and they take them out and they're just kind of done with them. So, But they're real cute when they happen. When they happen. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have a question. Uh, somebody asked about Kiwami needles, actually. Uh, they just said Kiwami needles, question mark? Yes. Yeah, Kiwami needles, um, I think you can order them through Neo Metal body jewelry right now they are extremely sharp i i don't know the true history are they based are they based off of the katanas Do you yes know? uh from my understanding uh they're the same needle just different branded yeah uh I, I i believe that they are like they are a reproduction but they're pretty much an exact reproduction done done at either the same or similar facilities okay, okay. Uh, that, that don't quote us on this one here if, if you know more about this let us know but yep. there's some of the sharpest craziest needles i've ever used yep i've They're... i've tried both katana and kiwamis now uh -huh. um and they they feel virtually the same to me katanas were like the original ones that they they came out a little bit earlier and they were amazing straight from japan kiwamis I believe are made in the same facility, but I'm okay. not 100% sure. It's, it's insane. I mean, we took pictures of a bunch of uh, needles the other day just under microscopes trying to compare them. You'll see it in the video coming out here soon. But it's it's just insane the difference that, that these needles can actually make. Mm -hmm. And as a piercer, like if you're a piercer and you're doing piercings and your finger has an indent when you're done, you're probably using some dull needles and you might want to look to upgrade your needles because I don't really feel any resistance anymore when I'm pushing a needle. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of times it's like, Oh, you have to work it through. Not with, not with these. You gotta be careful. I've actually seen them almost fly through piercings. They're so darn sharp. I told you my mentor doesn't like to use them for navel piercings because he's, he's like, they just go through too easily. <laughs> <laughs> like butter. Yeah. It's insane. So yeah, that's what Kwame needles are. And the thing is, is they're a lot more money. They're probably five to 10 times the price of a regular needle that most piercers use, mm -hmm. but that's why you go to a good piercer. Piercers who care are going to get the higher quality equipment. You're not going to feel it the same as we were talking about nipples earlier, how they don't get as much crusties. And it was, it's insane. It's insane. Go to a quality piercer. You're going to get a quality needle and you're going to get a quality piercing and it's going to heal a lot easier and a lot nicer. It's true. A, yeah. a lot of people don't understand that, you know, the, you know, their piercing is a, it, it, you can get super cheap piercings, but they're skimping on so many different places, not, not just the quality of the jewelry or the quality of, uh, even like what, what we prep with, um, all the, all the little things that mm -hmm. you don't see or don't think about. Hey, I'll, um, I'll, put, I'll put it this way. If someone said, Hey, we're going to do a piercing on you and it's going to cost you $50 and it's an additional $40. If you want me to upgrade to the Kwame needle, I would pay it. That's how big of a difference I think it makes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that says a lot. $40 just to upgrade the needle. And it's like, yeah, you can get through it. But that healing process, the actual, it's, it's yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today, I guess. No, 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 no. It is a big deal. Yeah. Um, I can make things super easy or not. Like I said, the Kiwami, uh, I got my nipple pierced for the third time by Scott. Uh, well, you didn't do it the previous two, but this mm -hmm. was definitely the easiest. And it was the first time I'd ever been pierced uh and at least have my nipple pierced with a kiwami or katana needle so um yep let's see from uh cannibal wizard said that they they stretched it to a 10 gauge but i'm not sure what what it is that they stretched i'm sorry if uh, if i don't remember well congratulations on the stretch <laughs> i don't yes. remember what we were talking about either um yeah i don't see any other comments gotta be lobes so yeah uh, gotta be lobes it's my or a septum 
Yeah, it could be a septum too. Yeah. My lobes are 10 gauge. Either way. Awesome. So awesome. that's a fun one. Um, <laughs> a follow up from Piercing by Lee. Uh, 16 millimeter. Sorry. Okay, cool. So, okay. Uh, also, hi from Cardiff, uh, Wales, UK. Love it. Hello. Welcome into the chat. We're global. <laughs> yes, we are. I love that so much. Um, here's a question from L. Garrity. Uh, hello. Do you have thoughts around TCA acid on closing stretched ears? I know there was a semi-viral video of somebody doing that yes. uh, years ago, but I saw someone use that method on Reddit. It looks sketchy. Um, sketchy to say the least. No, don't do it. Don't. You're putting acid on the body. It's going to eat it away. It's not going to look smooth when you're done. If it does actually even work, that's really, really dangerous. No, don't do it. Um, I. I don't even know what else to say. Like, if it's that big of a deal, you need to go to a doctor so the doctor can sew it back up or the surgeon who can sew it back up. And sometimes certain body modification artists can do that for you. But, yeah, don't do home remedies like that. That's a bad, bad, bad idea. Yes, it is. It's not going to turn out good. <laughs> it's not, yeah. No way. Yeah. That's a tough one. Um, yeah. If you like think it's going to turn out good, you should probably start playing the lottery because the odds are probably about the same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot about that one. I, I did, too. I remember watching those videos, and Same. it's like, it's just straight up acid eating the skin so it closes back up. And, and you've seen how burns look when they're healed? That's what it's going to look like. Your ear's going to look like a blob of scar tissue. It's going to look terrible. Yep. And uh, hurt. So yeah, oh, I'm sure it's brutal. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, from Kim. Hi, Scott. Uh, Kim from England. Hey, I, Kim. I have 13 piercings. Just got my tragus done. Congratulations. Um, hope you got or hope you got my message last week about a punk rock band. It was Ke uh, Keith Flint from The Prodigy, my reason for getting my septum piercing. I did see that. Yes. Yes, The Prodigy, that was what we were talking about because he's one of the ones that made the septum and I think believe the bridge too. Yeah. Um but I mean, I did see that you said punk, maybe punk industrial, but isn't it more electronica? Don't you think? I would say. Do you remember yeah. do you know who we're talking about Nova? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so, but definitely punk, because the guy had, like, the mohawk, oh, and it yeah. was the attitude, and that's everything. what punk is all about, um, but yeah, like, punk slash electronica, it was, the Prodigy's a cool band, if you don't know who they are, you should go check them out. Yeah. I don't even like electronic music that much, and that's something I can listen to on a regular basis. Awesome. Yes. Thank you very much for making that comment. I was, I couldn't remember who it was. It was killing me. It was on the tip of my tongue, and as soon as we were done, I saw that on the channel, like, the Prodigy, I'm like, ah. Yeah, let me pull, let me pull them up. Yeah, so let's show a picture. Thank you. Yeah, the Prodigy is a really, really cool band. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he passed away a couple years ago. Was, yeah. Yeah, this guy. Huge influence on people getting their septum pierced. And tongue pierced looks like, too. Yeah, his tongue's always out, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a rock star for you. Rock star. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Cool. Truly. Yep. Um, Missed. Yeah, very much, very much so. Uh, from Kaylee. Oh, no, hey, I'm Kaylee. sorry. Oh, I skipped somebody. Okay. Oh, I, no, uh, don't skip people. <laughs> Not kept, on uh, purpose. Kept piercing by Lee chiming in. Uh, I guess he's getting a conch punch on Tuesday. And uh, and he said that his, his ears were two inches. Uh, they were very healthy, and I love them. Uh, the issue was my job at the time, but now I'm a piercer, so I can let loose and go nuts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we gave into society, and then you finally said, nope. I'm just going to do my own thing. Well, good. I'm glad you're doing something that you like. I, hopefully you like it. It's an amazing career as long as you keep up the education and you don't make a bunch of shortcuts and just be that, that other piercer. Be yep. the good piercer we need you to be. And yes. uh, yeah, congratulations on your stretching journey again. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fun And one. the punch. The punch is really cool. Um, I've done several of these biopsy punches in the past in conscious. The only issue with these, I mean, like they can bleed quite a bit, but they're a loud crunch. It's like one of the loudest procedures I've ever heard. And it, like I've used to work with these tattoo artists. He used to draw all these gore and skulls and, you know, all this crazy stuff. And I remember one, just one tattoo artist just, uh, I think his name was Joe, had to leave the room. He was in there. He's like, was that a, oh, and he had to run out of the room. And I was like, yeah, real big tough guy for <laughs> drawing all that gore. But when I hear a little crunch, run like a little baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baby but yeah, crunch. conch punches. Not very painful, but noisy. I've never, uh, I've never seen or done a biopsy punch, but uh, I've seen like O needle stuff before. I think I did my first one probably in 97. Mm-hmm. 
96, 97, That's right. somewhere around there. And I did a tandem too. It was crazy. Whoa. We did a conch on each side. So yeah, I think we went right to the zero. So it was like two gauge stretch to the zero, something like that. That's, yeah. that's, that's a, that had to be rough. <laughs> oh. well, I mean, that's how my conches were pierced. Mine were yeah. done with needles. Yeah. Um, and that was brutal. I wish it would have been punched because four gauge needle followed by two gauge tapers Whew. on each side. Oh, yeah, I'd have been hit by a Mack truck. <laughs> <laughs> i believe that <laughs> um all right we've got a question from Haley, and i actually love this question um I, I believe she's asking uh she's she said she she couldn't spell but i believe she's asking uh what do we think about the hidden helix um which i i'm really excited about i'm probably going to be getting it pretty yes. soon um i'm currently healing up a forward helix that had a little bit of a hiccup um it was going really well and I thought it was going really well. Um, but we had to, had to put a slightly larger, uh, larger, uh, flat back in life happens. Yes, it does. Um, so once that's a little healed up, I plan on getting yep. the hidden helix on the other year. Hidden helixes are amazing. Um, at my shop right now, I have a bunch of different chains and things that are made for hidden helixes. We don't pierce with chains right away. We start and heal it up. And then once it's downsized and we can put that bar in there with the chain. I know Invictus makes a bunch of really cool chains and fun things that kind of hang from there. Um, and I know I have multiple piercings healing right now of these hidden helixes, but they should be coming in soon. And then we can start installing these chains. And uh, you can bet that those pictures will be going up on my Piercing Vegas website soon as we get those healed ones installed. Yes. They look so cool. I'm a yeah, huge fan of them. The Hidden Helix is generally the upper part up here. I don't have much of a ridge, so mine wouldn't be that that much of a hidden one. But when this ridge is folded over more and you can't see where the piercing is coming out and you just have some yep. chains hanging out, oh, they look so Can you pull up some pictures? Yeah, We talk about this and like we need to just like see this stuff. Yeah, and then agreed. people also do a hidden conch piercing, which again is like instead of doing the upper helix up here, you're just doing the conch where it looks like there's a chain hanging out inside so cool love the hidden hidden piercings okay, i'll have to show you some pictures here and at the shop we have them in titanium where you can anodize them we also have them in the gold but yeah as you can see yeah, sweet. sweet yes we yeah. are see as you can see like a hidden helix kind of hanging out of there they're a really really fun piercing super beautiful yep. and they kind of angle up they don't go straight back they kind of angle up so the disc is up there and you can't really see it from the back or kind of the front just find the right jewelry and it, it looks pretty epic. One of my favorite ones is like, you see the one that says Reddit, Hidden Helix, um, off to the left up? My, yeah, higher, left, that one. I like when they have the multiple chains hanging down like that. Yeah, me too. That's my favorite look. Me too. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I do have a really big fold uh, for Hidden Helix, so I'm really excited to, uh, <laughs> to get that. Yeah, we need to get some jewelry in there then. Yes. So. Sweet, sweet. Yes, yep, is. the Hidden Helix and also the Hidden Conch. Yeah, Great they're piercings. they're both really cool. Um, is a septum a hidden nose piercing? Uh, I would say yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, mean, I want to get the hidden nose. People are like, "What are you talking about?" It's hidden, the septum, silly. Yeah. Hidden nose, hidden nostril. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, hi, Lillian. Um, so Lillian is up to forty piercings now. Forty. Um, so, yes, apparently. That's she, impressive. She she just got four more done. I remember you saying you were going to. So I'm very excited to hear about that. Up to 40. That's awesome. Yep. That's amazing. That's a lot of piercings. But if you have a lot of ears, I mean, ears can fill up pretty darn yeah. quick before you know <laughs> you, it. You know, If you so. have a lot of ears. <laughs> so let me ask you this. This is kind of like me getting all philosophical and kind of weird here. Um, sometimes I've always wanted to say that I have zero piercings because I personally think the piercing is the actual moment you're getting pierced. Like the piercing happens yep. and now the piercing's done, but you get an artifact from the piercing. So sometimes I like to be a smart butt, smart ass, whatever <laughs> what it was. I try not to swear in here, but it's just like, yeah, I don't have any piercings, but I have like 23 artifacts from piercings. There you go. Or jewelry. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's the way I feel. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, I have all these different body piercings, but the actual piercing itself is over with, and I only have artifacts from it. So. <laughs> we get a lot of calls from the shop, and people are like, do you have piercings for piercings? <laughs> <laughs> or what gauge are your gauges? Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> proper term. <laughs> it's always fun. But, yeah, that's the way I look at it, and it's, um, yeah. And I've been pierced prop. I've lost track of times. I need to do – uh. I'm going to do that. I need to do a full, what do they call it? Like a mapping out of all the piercings or the, yeah, the tour piercing yeah, tour. Piercing. Yeah. There you go. Hundreds, hundreds of piercings. 
That's and we'll awesome. do like a little list down here and just like start checking off how many times they've been done because <laughs> most have been done multiple times. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. We've got one from Raven Gaming. Uh, I'm 46 and have been into piercings for the last six years. I uh, got my tongue, septum lobes pierced and stretched with no issue. Lip piercings, libre, and snake bites. They gave me issues. Yeah, oral piercings can be problematic. Um, once you start having problems, it's just like just a battle to get rid of it. And once you finally get them healed, they're generally pretty easy to deal with. Um, but yeah, if you have problems, that sucks. Yeah. And the thing is, is eventually, if you get a lot of piercings, you're going to start having some issues, like things you don't realize. Oh, I only sleep on this side. When I wear the helmet, it affects this cartilage piercing. When I hear my earphone, when I wear my earphones, it affects this or this. And we have to adapt our life to make things work. And that's kind of one of the fun things about piercing. Number one, we're challenging our immune system. So our immune systems are getting stronger because, you know, it's like working out. If you work out your immune system, it keeps getting better and better. I saw a study in some magazine a while ago. I got to find that. And then, um, it was the other thing I was going to say. I just got totally distracted <laughs> there. So, um, but yeah, it's really, really good for our systems to, uh, to be able to learn how to heal. Oh, and mentally being learned to be the detective. What's wrong with this? Instead of going to the doctor saying, Hey, fix me. There's no real doctors out there. It's like, you got to figure this out, break it down. Am I sleeping on it? What's new? Do I have new laundry detergent, new fabric softener? Yep. Um, is it a new hair product? Is it, you know, cause all these things are factors. It's unbelievable. And, uh, so yeah, not only are piercings making us more intelligent, but they're also making us stronger. There you go. That's why you should get pierced. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Immune system. Um, we have a, a comment from Claire Duffield. Uh, hi, Scott. Thank hi, you Claire. for helping me last time. You're very uh, well. I was the one who lost the ball in my top helix, and I had no stud in it for three, but got one back in on day four. Good. Uh, awesome. Thank you again. Yes, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to get jewelry in there right away because five minutes and they can start closing if that jewelry falls out. Uh, Tate says, good morning, Scott. Good to see you. Good you morning, too. Tate. Morning. Um, afternoon for us here. Yes. Yeah. Depends afternoon. on where you're at. We have people <laughs> all over the world. Sometimes it's evening. Sometimes it's morning. It's true. Um, and we have a follow-up question from Michael. Uh, he is thinking about converting his snake bites to shark bites. Opinions. Sweet. Mark. Yeah. I think those are cool. I love shark bites. Um, shark bites are basically like the doubles instead of the singles. Um, and basically it's like a double set of spider bites. If you want to get technical too. They're generally pretty easy. And the thing is, is I think the body has a little bit of a muscle memory kind of a thing going on where it's like, oh, we've been through this before. So the swelling generally isn't as bad the second time around. You get used to it. And it's a cool look. I love the look of the circular barbell with the single stud next to it. That's really where it looks like there's three beads on there. Um, Ooh, the person there on that Reddit looks like they're having some problems. Looks like they're overswelling and it's getting sucked in. And they had some bruising because it got too tight. Um, but yeah, you see where my video up top, uh, the shark bites, the double snake bites right there. Super cool piercings. If you have one, like I said, it's the swelling's not so bad the second time. You just got to still accommodate and make sure you have room for swelling on that other piercing. I actually so. love these with rings. I think they look super rad. Yeah, yeah. I've always liked the loose looking rings, but sometimes like that double tight one with the black looks really good too. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think that one's fake. It's his faux jewelry. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yep. Yay. Photoshop. Oh yeah. Good times. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, from Liam. Uh, hi, I love your vids. Uh, I'm really interested in piercing, but I'm 16 and my mom won't sign for them. I'm not really in contact with her anymore. Sad, I uh, moved out two years ago, uh, so I'll have to wait until 18, sadly. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, That's if sad. you have emancipation papers, something that says you're on your own legally, then I think you can get your piercings done, but you have to have that paperwork, and it's not easy to get. Mm -hmm. Most cities and states that I know of have strict requirements, and we can lose our license if we don't pierce you. So, yeah, piercings are awesome. Good things come to those who wait. That's You'll true. get there. I had to wait, too. I had to wait until so I was 18 I. to get anything. So, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, my, I finally wore my mom down at, into, at about 17. Did you? Um, yeah, for, it, it wasn't as much that she didn't want me to, but like the school that I went to, like I wasn't allowed to, like guys weren't allowed to have piercings. Okay. Um, so, uh, which is, yeah, crazy. So I, a lot, some people like would just like get earlobes done in the summer and then heal them in the summer. But yeah, it was always a huge pain. So I waited. I'm almost 50 years old and I don't think schools had rules about that because the school was thinking what parents would let their kids do that type of thing for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Come from a different time. It's crazy. Yep. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I was probably like 
10 or 12 when I started wanting to get my earlobes pierced and I couldn't get pierced, not even earlobes until I was 18. So started young and every year I asked the same answer. Nope. No, no, <laughs> no. Why are you asking? No, the answer is no. And then on my 18th birthday, my dad brought me to get my ears pierced. Cause he's like, I know you're going to do this. Might as well, if you can't beat them, join them. You know, he didn't get yeah. his ears pierced, but at least he came and supported me and said I could get it done. So thanks dad. That's awesome. It'll also make it that much sweeter when you finally get it. Yes. Yes. Something Cause you love it that much more. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. A question from Sammy. Uh, Hey Scott Nova. Hi. Hi. Um, my ears are at 20 millimeter septum is a 12 gauge and I just had my nostrils stretched to 16 gauge. Oops. I'm not, not a question, but no, that's awesome. That's I, really, uh, really cool. My, my nostrils are also a 16 gauge. Um, you know, it, it cracks me up. You, I mean, I'm not laughing at you here right now, no. but it's like you said, your septum's at a 16 and your ears are at a 20 millimeter. Like, we're, when did we start mixing all our measurement things? It's not you, it's True. everybody, but it's like we're mixing the metric with the whole imperial. And it's like, we should just switch to all the metric. The numbers make way more sense. Everyone hates fractions. And I would make the conversion. I would switch over. I'm used to the fractions, but most people just get so confused. Like, oh, you need a 732nd. What's a 732nd? You know? I don't know what uh, 20 millimeters is. That's like almost an inch, right? Um, isn't 10, 10, 10 millimeters is a centimeter. So that's two centimeters. So I think two and a half is almost an inch. So I'd guess it'd be seven eighths, three quarters, seven eighths. That's my guess. Let me know in the comments. I know you guys have the answers down there. <laughs> uh, Google says 13 sixteenths. <laughs> Again, weird, weird <laughs> size. But if you broke down 13 sixteenths, you went down. So it'd be 12 sixteenths. Well, 13, 13. So 13, six 13, eighths, three quarters. Yeah, just under three quarters. There you go. Or just over. Yeah. So. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, 19, 19 millimeters <laughs> is three fourths. So. Cool. Uh, cool. Yeah, we'll just over learn something quarters. new. <laughs> yes, that's how I do all the conversions for all that stuff. I have to run all that through my head. It'd be oh, yeah. easier if I just memorize those numbers. Just, I should just spend a day just memorizing. <laughs> yeah, so should I. <laughs> it's my job. I mean, jeez, right? stubborn. It's like old ways. I'm not changing. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, forgive me if I butcher this name, uh, but hi, uh, Arif from Turkey. Hi, Arif awesome from Turkey. From um, and Violetta has a question. Violetta, sure. Violetta. Again, sorry, I'm butchering all the names today. Um, I had a belly piercing twice, and it rejected twice. Any reason why this happens? Sad face. There's many, many reasons why navel piercings reject. Um, if you were wearing high-waisted pants where your pants are rubbing right up against the piercing, it's going to keep it irritated. Irritation causes piercings to reject. Second thing is if it was pierced improperly. You, naturally, you have to pierce a natural ridge like this is a natural ridge like the webbing between your hands but if i was trying to grab the skin on top where it's nice and flat that has no ridge and the skin naturally wants to go down causing the piercing to reject now the thing is is once your piercing rejects the scar tissue is not stronger than your old normal skin it's only about 80 percent strength of the normal skin so if it rejected once it's more likely to reject a second and even third time so unfortunately it's probably not going to work out for you unless it was just pierced too high up and you can bring it down over that natural ridge and if it's in a different area you might be able to get it to work but that's the unfortunate truth it needs to go through the ridge and it needs to be a curved barbell and your pants can't rub up against it all yep. the planets need to be aligned <laughs> for navel to be smooth yeah it's true yes. and there are unfortunately a lot of piercers out there that will pierce you even if you don't have the anatomy just because they want to make the money to do so yep yep so I would imagine that's maybe what happened. Not, not for sure without seeing, but I really hate saying that, but yeah, Nova's absolutely right. There's a lot of piercers who just take your money. So you do need to educate yourself. You don't have to know how to be a piercer, but you need to know what to look for. You know, like, Oh, I'm coming in. I'm like, I'm going to get something over here. I don't know. Like that's a lot of blind trust for someone to, you know, but if you knew you want a helix piercing, you know, you want to wear the certain size cluster, you know, it has to be not in a ridge and you know, you can educate yourself a little bit before, before you go in, like for the navel piercing, if you don't have a natural ridge on that belly button, it's probably going to reject. Nova, can you pull up navel piercings? Like, um, sure. yeah. And we'll see if we can find a, a picture of both where it has a flat ridge as well as a good solid ridge to pierce. Um, and it has nothing to do with your skinny or your fat or any of that. A lot of it has to do with the way your belly button was tied off. Um, so 
Uh, for instance, there's a natural ridge right there. Um, I'm trying to find a, da, 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 a lot of good ridges here. Yep, yeah, these are all really good ridges. Um, up oh, that one to the right versus down. Oh, there. Okay, yeah. that is not a natural ridge. You see how they just kind of grab the skin and it's kind of creating its own ridge, which is probably going to reject out over time. Yep. It still looks pretty red around that area. Um, sometimes it takes a year or a couple years for them to reject. Sometimes they come out really, really, really quick. Yep, and this one isn't even done in the navel, actually. So you Now, that one's supposed to be a floating navel. And, yeah, you're right. That, that disc should have been further on the inside of that belly button under that little to make it work. That's probably just going to reject right out. That's really a bummer. Yeah. Yep. So, but you see how there's natural ridges again, the one with the Reddit one, it looks like it's all red with the black. Uh, we should get... there you go. Yeah. See how red and irritated and, and yeah, that's because it's not going through a ridge and it's, you know, there's a possibility healing them up, but they generally don't look perfect and they're always going to have a little bit of that scar tissue around it. So Yeah, and they're, and they're, I've always seen those, uh, the ones that do end up healing, there's uh, like there's that ridge of tissue that's there. It just doesn't and, look natural, natural. Yeah. But, you know, some people really want it, and if you want it, you can go for it, but, you know, it's a very anatomy-dependent piercing for it to heal and look yeah, smooth. There's, a, there's another. Yeah. It's, and, and yeah, the, the solution Excuse that a lot of piercers have to, oops, to not having the ridge is just to not even pierce the navel and basically do a surface piercing with a curved barbell above yep. the navel. Um, see, you see the one, that's my video there. That's about floating navels. You see how you can't even see the inside. That's because the piercing had to be deep enough inside there in order for that to, to kind of create a ridge. Yep. Cause there's, there's less of a ridge there. Yeah. And when they bend, it probably like would push on a regular bead. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, and the situation with the floating navel, it's not like, oh, like, I'd rather have the floating over this. It's it's anatomy thing. Like, you don't have the anatomy for a regular piercing, but a floating would probably work for you. If you have a regular, normal ridge on your piercing, floating navels generally don't work too well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. So. But they're fun, so. Absolutely. Um, and, and just to echo uh, what, you, what you said, Scott, definitely educating yourself is important. I think at least what you can do is educate yourself enough to find a piercer that is good that you can trust. Yeah. Um, and then, then once you have established that trust, it's a little, it makes it a little easier to, to keep going. And I'm just going to um, shout out to Elaine Angel on this one because she has a book called The Piercing Bible, and there's like two renditions now, the second one. I think Jeff Saunders helped edit on the second one. But it's um, it doesn't teach you how to pierce, but it gives you the basics and things to look out for. And as a piercer or a non-piercer, this is a book worth having. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Sam Peterson. Hi, Scott and Nova. Uh, just sending my appreciation, keeping the end of my dull data entry work to interesting slash education. <laughs> Love it. Welcome to the chat here. We're glad to have you here. Um, yeah, pay attention. Don't get the wrong data entered. <laughs> <laughs> uh from phil johnson hey guys cheers from quebec canada love the live stream thank you for all you do uh hi phil we've got a lot of friends up in uh up in that area so hope you guys are doing well yes and staying warm yes, <laughs> yes how's indeed. the weather up there right now we've had a crazy warm winters here so and uh yeah i know Can i'm originally from minnesota and canada's further north than minnesota and that was already too cold for me so <laughs> truly <Woo! laughs> Uh, from Jenny Friedman. Uh, Hi, Scott. How close can someone pierce to a retired conch piercing with the hole still opened? Uh, and second second question, and is it me or is the APP gimmicky and very misleading? Um, let's start with the first question. Can you read it again for me, Nova? Like, sure. How close can you get to a healed piercing? Yeah, how, how close can, I, I would imagine, someone pierce to a retired conch piercing with the hole still open? So I think they had a piercing that healed and maybe they wanted it like farther in or farther out. Okay. Uh, okay. To, to wear a small ring or maybe, um, first of all, you got to give it some time to make sure it's fully retired and closed because if you let it close a little bit more, it's good, better chance for it not migrating into the other hole. Um, I don't have an exact measurement, but I would say you can probably get about a millimeter away. And there again, you're going to want to have the piercer, make sure they angle the needle properly away from the piercing hole so if it migrates it goes more away from it instead of towards it and if they're a piercer they'll know what i'm talking about um but yeah if you 
so like the bevel the needle like the holes here the bevel needs to kind of be pushing away from that actual hole in order for to get that close but probably about a millimeter away I've never really gave an exact answer on that. I, it could be a little closer. It could be a little further, but roughly a millimeter. Um, Depends yeah. on the tissue, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Because uh, if it connects, they yep. fall into each other, and you're back to square one, and you're healing up a piercing you already had. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're tough. Would it, would it ever work better? I actually don't know this, but it would, would it work better to put jewelry back into if it's, like, opened and not closing? Would it be better to put jewelry back in? so? No, no, I think you want it to completely close so it's not distorting the tissue. Makes sense. Yeah, and then you can get pretty close. And a lot of times, like, that hole shrinks up. So you can get closer to a smaller hole than you can a bigger hole. Yep. I think, so. That makes sense. Yeah, that's my two cents. Okay, and the second part of the question was APP uh, I, yes. gimmicky? Uh, or? Is, is it me or is the APP gimmicky and very misleading? I don't think it's... Uh, it's a yes and no answer to, to all aspects of this. The APP is a great organization which promotes health and safety, and they do that. They do have some very high standards sometimes, and sometimes, in my opinion, it almost might be excessive. And the only reason I say that is because you're trying to heal a wound open and you're not leaving with a complete dressing on there. So what level is too much where you're taking away from the experience and from, from the piercer and at what level do you need to add for the bare minimum to, to assure a sterile, safe, clean procedure. Um, now that's what the APP does is they say that they follow certain protocol. The APP doesn't say they're a qualified piercer and they're going to get a straight, accurate piercing. Okay, um, that's where a lot of people like I only go to APP because they're the best. And it's like there's good piercers and bad piercers, but they're all safe piercers. That's the easiest way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my opinion. I think every piercer should be going to the APP conference to take educational classes and stay up to date on the new jewelry styles, the new aftercares. The, I mean, there's a lot of great information there. You don't have to be a member of it, um, but you can still get that same education from them. But I've been a member in the past. I'm not currently a member. Um, and a lot of it's just because of Jewy choices and different standards. Mm -hmm. So, you have anything to add, Nova? No. No? Not really. Yeah, good question. Yep, yeah. I, really I, good question. It's confusing. Yeah, it, it can be. I really like the way you summarized it, which is they, you know, they they might not be the best piercer, but they're they're safe. Like, yes, you know, they're yes. They're using quality materials and have certain certain qualifications so yes because being an app member doesn't mean you're not a shaky piercer and you can always hit your dots mm -hmm. it just says that the needle's sterile and clean you're following certain safety protocol and there's no cross contamination going on so that's what that's saying but hopefully your piercing gets straight then yep absolutely but generally most app piercers are people who care so yep. they're going to be generally higher quality piercers for I, the most part i would agree with that too yes i would agree with that too yeah um awesome uh we have a question from savannah uh, right. how do i know if the cartilage on my ear is ready to be repierced after it was irritated for months um so generally i tell people a minimum of about a month before you even think about getting it repierced now the thing is if it's still super swollen puffy in that area or really red and you get it repierced in that same spot it's going to stay puffy and swollen and that redness generally doesn't go away. It's like you lock that redness into your skin. So I generally prefer someone using some sort of a scar tissue remover like Mederma. I don't know any other brands. I'm going to have to, I'll have to do some brand searching and figure out what's all out there and what's the best thing nowadays. But anyway, scar tissue remover will take all the discoloration out of there, break down the scar tissue and make it as close to normal as possible before you get repierced. Um, you can get it pierced as soon as a month afterwards, but like I said, if you already have that bump and that redness, it's never going to look fully healed because that redness in that swollen area will stay that way. Awesome. Yes. Um, so the answer is variable. Depends. Every person's different. Yeah, everyone's a little different. It's tough. That, I feel like that's the answer to a lot of a lot of piercing questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which and patience. Do you know, it's like because I get people come in and like I'm here because it's one month and you said I had to downsize in one month. I'm like, if you're ready. You know, minimum of one month is what I say a lot of times. And it's like, you got to listen to your body. And if it's like, oh, it's so swollen, there's no bar sticking out. But he said, I have to downsize. No, 
Yep. Wait till you see the bar and it's causing, you know, you can see that's when you need to downsize. So it's not causing more problems. I, I feel like so. I've seen that mostly when people want to switch something to a ring, uh, like a helix or a nostril. Mm. They're, they're like, they, they come back like on the day, basically. Uh, <laughs> You're like, oh, four to six months. or. Three. And the thing is, is 99% of those people who show up exactly when we say it's, it has to be this this long right. have never experienced a bump before. Yep. Okay. But then if you've ever experienced a bump, like in your helix or cartilage, and you're like, oh, I got my nose pierced. I can't wait to wear a ring. I'm like, minimum four months to minimize the chance of wearing a bump. And they'll look you right in the face and go, then I'm waiting a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's true. So. It's true. <laughs> I've, I've also found that the people that aren't aren't as patient usually aren't ready uh like they come in and i feel like most of the time i have we have to turn them away uh, correct so yeah people definitely. are looking to get, for an answer they're yep. like i i know it's not ready but i still gotta ask because maybe he might say yes <laughs> yeah but you know your body better than we know your body so therefore you should listen to your body and you'll know when you're ready yep absolutely yes uh, from Christian G. Uh, just got both my eyebrows today. Love that. I, eyebrow piercings are making a comeback. I was just talking. To, we were just talking about that. They really are. And you know, the biggest thing is, well, first of all, congratulations on getting your piercings. That's pretty awesome. Eyebrow piercings are fairly easy. Um, and also, I don't know if you know this or not, but sometimes you get a little bit of a black eye from a piercing. There's a lot of capillaries and veins in this area, and your eyelid might turn a little bit purple. Don't let it freak you out. It happens to the best of us. Yes, it does. But anyways, I, what I was going to say is it's different now than it was in the 90s. In the 90s, it feels like everyone kind of pointed those eyebrow piercings right to the corner of their eye, going yep. perpendicular to the eyebrow, so they seem to be a lot further out. Now people want them further in, yeah. just like me, the trendsetter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't invent this. Oh, yeah. I just like them in a little further like this. Yeah, you can see how it's in a little further. You can see some of my old scars. I'm looking at the TV. Everything's backwards. You see how they used to be a lot further out? That's the tr traditional way um, back in the 90s. I bring them in and more up and down. And I've even had them, seen them all the way on the inside before. Not everyone has the anatomy. That skin gets a lot tougher there, but it's pretty cool. Especially yep. if you can kind of line them up and do like the bridge. So you have bead, 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 bead. Oh, so rad. That is, that's actually my plan is, uh yeah, I want to do the. Sorry, I won't tell anyone else about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, I want to do like the ladder stacked the whole way down for the most part. Sweet. Uh, except in the bridge, I'm going to do something. A yes. Different. But yeah, it does look cool. And uh, I also, when I got my bridge pierced, I had the blackest eye. So <laughs> it's like I got I, the fight. Half of my eyebrow piercings, I've gotten black eyes. And I've like, and my anti eyebrows, like these ones, holy crap, double shiners. I was just like, yep. Yeah. Like I ran <laughs> into a brick wall or something. Um, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, let's see from, I, I'm going to butcher this name, Subrosa the first, uh, can you recommend any piercers in England that are the level of quality you're talking about? Um, there are a lot of good piercers in England. I would say where, where in England? I, yeah, at? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sorry to, but, um, what is the England APP? I think it's just called UK APP. UK APP. Um, if you look that up, that like like we were talking about the APP earlier, it's the same thing. These are people who care a lot more. I don't know anyone personally that I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, I think Nova, are you looking it up right now? Yeah, there are people that I know of. Uh, okay, I'm like blanking on on anybody, but yeah, I would say where where in England. Uh, if you give me like a city or a, or a zip code, we'll try or something, to get back that a little can, bit, uh, but yeah. Hey, do a little bit of research. Um, I don't know. I don't think they use Yelp as much over there as they do here, do they? Or is that a worldwide thing? Showing I, my ignorance here. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For those of you for the rest around the world, what do you guys use for reviews? Do you guys have review websites? Like here in America, we have like Yelp and Google Review. Um, I'm sure Google, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, I that's finding a reference site where you can search people's quality of work does a lot. Um, and then also, if you're not sure, you can also look up the piercer and go to their website or go to their Instagram or social media and look at the quality of their work. If everything looks a little eh, you know, they should be posting their best work. And if it's eh, that's scary. Yep. Scary. For sure. Yeah. It's amazing to me what some people post. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. <laughs> it is, and they're so proud of it. I'm like, it's crooked. It's not even in the right spot, and it's, uh, yeah, wipe off all the blood, people. Yeah, it's funny. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Um, from Jonathan. Uh, hi, Jonathan. awesome show. Uh, Thank as you. Usual, my question is, what is the proper way to stretch your conch, and do you have any info on conch removal? No information on contra. That seems to be the theme of the show today is like yeah. contra removal or big contra piercings. Um, big concern about possible 
loss of hearing. You're going to be able to hear, but nothing's going to be captured to the same way. I don't know what can be done. I just talked to a plastic surgeon the other day about cartilage reconstruction, and there's not a whole lot they can do with that stuff. Like I've talked about nostrils and uh, she was just like, yeah, I don't, there's not much we can do. And I'm like, you can probably make it a little better, but yeah, conch removal's a serious, serious commitment. Um, do you want to pull up an image of that? That's like sure. body modification. I think we're going to be using like scalpels and you're going to be suturing it shut. And it's, it's pretty darn extreme. I don't know if I condone it as much, but if it's your lifelong dream and it's what you need, you know, follow your dreams. But, oh yeah. You see this? This is a lot and that could be a life altering ex you know experience like i'm thinking about getting the coin slot which is on the side of the ear um and could be a little bit but wow that elf ear conch removal that is insane looking yep. it looks so cool but i don't know it if does. i could do it that the, the one the elf ear with the conch removal is the coolest one i've ever seen yeah yeah that is cool but uh definitely would be considered considered an extreme body mod that's like the the one percent of extreme extremes, so though. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. It looks cool, but do your homework. It it's gonna affect more than you can probably imagine. Yep. Uh, he also asked about what the proper way to stretch your conch was. Um. Time. The <laughs> conch is thick. It doesn't like to stretch as nicely. Um, I'm gonna probably suggest going with Gorilla Glass body jewelry. Okay. And Gorilla Glass makes in between sizes, and they also sell different lengths of plugs. So you can find conch pins in different lengths because the conch is thicker. A normal plug sometimes doesn't go all the way through, and it's tough to get that O ring on the back if you're using that. Some people like the look of the longer pin going through their ear. Um, but that'd be my suggestions half sizes with the glass, probably going to take twice as long as a normal earlobe. Mm -hmm. six to eight weeks for an earlobe to stretch to the next size you're probably looking at three to five months minimum between each stretch hiccups there they are i get them every episode <laughs> that's funny um yeah i would agree wholeheartedly uh a question from chris uh hi. oh well Sorry. back one more time sure. and if you're a normal size conch piercing right now like if you're like at a 14 or a 16 gauge wear rings to start off with Wear hoops in there because the hoops are going to move around. They're going to loosen up, and it's going to make those first couple stretches a little bit easier. And if you can deal with a little bit of the weight, you know, like larger sizes, having larger rings in there, that will stretch it, but it can be kind of uncomfortable. So it's another possibility. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yep. Uh, from Chris. Uh, hi, oh, Chris. I, I just got my septum pierced like two days ago, and the old scar is right next to the old hole, uh, and it got quite inflamed. I uh, shouldn't worry, right? Question mark. Uh, my biggest fear are key keloids, but I never got one. Um, septums sometimes get a little bit of a bump, but they're really not prone to keloiding the same way. Um, if you had it right next to the old ones, that means you probably either had a crooked piercing and had to have it repierced, or you took it out and got it repierced. Um, but either way, that whole area is going to be swollen. Um, you're going to put irritation on the old scar tissue or that fistula, so it's going to swell up too. It's probably going to go down in a couple days, so I wouldn't really be concerned about it at all. Just keep the crusties off there. Don't try to keep the irritation to a minimum, and you should be totally normal. But yeah. No concerns here. Awesome. Uh, from Kristen, uh, Kristen Ashley. What's up, uh, Kristen? I have a six millimeter high lobe. Um, a six millimeter high lobe. Sweet. Uh, I was thinking a six millimeter high lobe. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a really high lobe piercing. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, that I switched to three rings and got a bump on. Uh, I switched back to a plug and got some emu oil to help. How long before I start to see results? Um, generally with the emu oil, I see results within a few days to maybe a week or so. Um, if your second hole kind of is close or touching the cartilage, it's going to take a little bit longer, more irritation because things don't like to be moved around as much there. So I'd guess a couple days, maybe a couple weeks and you should be back to normal. But keep in mind, like you you have a plug in there, which is completely round. And then you're putting a triangle because three rings are going to kind of create a triangle. The angles, there's a chance you're going to get bumps like that. It does happen. Um, but yeah, just give it some time and maybe try it again. And you, sh you might be successful the second time around. But give it several weeks, maybe a couple months before you go back to that again. But you'll see results within a couple days. Awesome. Um, 
I see from uh, a follow-up question from Sabrosa the First there in Bristol, England. Yes. Uh, yes, actually, I have two people I can send you to. Uh, Mike Hill at Broad Street Studio or uh, Jess uh, at Golden Fern. Sweet. They're both awesome. Good. So, hope that helps. Yeah, I hope that helps, too. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's Sorry, just so important to find a good piercer. It really is. Yes, it is. Super important. Uh-huh. If you're someone who like really cares about your hair, you have your hair person, whether yep. it's a barber, hairdresser, stylist, and you go elsewhere and it gets messed up. It's the same thing with piercers. You have your comfort levels, the trust levels. It just makes a way better experience when you have someone you really know is going to be taking care of you. Yep, absolutely. Um, we have a question from Phil. Uh, got my snug done recently and I love it. Uh, Sweet. I could have enough space for a second snug a little higher up since that rich is pretty pronounced. Any thoughts? I think it could look really nice. Don't do it. <laughs> um, I'm No, don't do it yet. You're going to be really, really swollen and the snug is a rough heel. If you just got it done, see how you're doing. And maybe I would suggest after several months, if it's doing good, you could get a second one. But a lot of times these take over a year to heal. Plus, you're probably really swollen. And if we did the piercing, when it heals, the angles aren't going to be lined up the same way because you're not in a natural state. So um, if you were to do a double snug, I would say you have to have have the skinniest snug, the perfect anatomy, and it would have to be done in the same sitting right away. That's my personal opinion. You could get it done and be totally fine, but I have a feeling if you got that second snug now, it's just going to change the shape of the tissue and cause massive bumps and kind of a nightmare of a healing process. If it's doing good, don't curse it. Yep, I, I yeah. agree. Snugs are, snugs are difficult yeah. as is. As tempting as that would be, like, cause, I mean, if you're doing good now, yeah, don't jinx it. So Maybe get a faux snug on the... Uh, yeah, that's a, a good higher. fun idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, faux snugs are cool. They're like, it, it's basically two piercings that are crossed one on like the helix and one on. Yeah. I one a conch and one of a outer helix. Conch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that could be cool for sure. Uh, from M Ballin. Uh, how are you doing, Scott? Kissy face. <laughs> What's happening? Um, I'm doing really good. Uh, the caffeine is definitely kicking in. I'm definitely wide awake. Love my, do- by the way, for those of you drinking here with me, cheers. Awesome. And I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, I, I do want to give a, a shout out to Scott also. Thank you very much for, for coming on to answering questions and make sure you like and subscribe so we can keep doing this. Please do that. Yeah, it makes such a difference for us. Um, like, subscribe, tell your friends. And whenever we do these live chats, be active, talk, don't be shy. We can't see your face here. Yep. So uh, yeah. And there is, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So I, I always find that I learn in these live chats as well. So Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, there is such thing as a stupid question. Like, is one plus one ten? Like, that's <laughs> that's a stupid yes. question. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, just going to tell you the wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, in general, please speak up. We don't know, and the more we know, the better off we're all going to be. Mm-hmm. And someone else has wanted to ask the same question. You just haven't had the guts to ask, so ask them. It's true. Um. All right, from Karsten Crossley. Uh, right. Hi, Scott. I'm just wondering if, I have a, if I'm a slow healer. Uh, I have two sides of my nose done with uh, two 12-gauge. Uh, have you heard of... Oh, I'm sorry. That's a, that's a follow-up question. And have you heard of flesh impressions from Australia? Uh, they are APP. Flesh impressions. Uh, I recognize the name. I don't know who's there. That's kind of where I'm at, too. Like, I know I've probably seen the tag at, like, a piercing conference or something. But Yeah, I know I know piercers more than I know, like, shop names, but I'll so, double check. Nostril piercings, you said 12-gauge? Uh, two 14, yeah, two 14-gauge piercings. Two 14-gauge piercings. 14 slightly bigger than normal, and if it's an actual piercing and not a biopsy punch, you're making a crescent incision, pushing tissue off to the side. Now, if you are two on one side that's a lot of tissue on one side being displaced and it's going to be longer for it to heal so don't you may be taking longer to heal too but 14 gauge is slightly bigger and it's a little bit more trauma to the area so i expect a longer healing process now if you did biopsy punches at 14 gauge where the tissue is removed it should heal roughly the same as a smaller gauge like an 18 gauge or something like that um did they say how long they've been healing it uh, no, I didn't see that. So I, I'm going to say with two 14 gauge nostril piercings, expect between three and six months for it to be fully healed up. A lot of times these things are going to seem healed after a couple months. 
a normal nostril piercing, I tell people it's going to seem healed after a month, but keep cleaning it until the crusties are completely gone. But yeah, three to six months still. And if it's been a couple of years, yeah, you're a longer healer than normal. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, and it looks like uh, a fellow named Paul Arrington uh, owns Flesh Impressions. Uh, I guess he's been piercing for a long time. Um, well, good. I, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not from. I'm actually not familiar with him, but uh, the shop looks great. So. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Thanks, Nova. Shop and work with, and his work looks awesome too. So uh, good, good. A lot of times, a picture really can speak for itself. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Um, from Sheila Polanco, uh, I got oh, my Sheila. dahlias done today, and my piercer warned me. Of other people drooling through them, but I've never heard anyone say this. Is it true? <laughs> I'm going to say most likely no. Yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I had my lips pierced and I decided I wanted to, to squirt water through them. Be honest with you. Um, and so I started, got my lips pierced at 14 gauge. I couldn't get water through them and I started stretching and I got them all up to at least a six gauge. And all I could get was barely a little drip when I had water in my mouth. And I was pushing as hard as I could. I've heard of other people that would be able to squirt out of there. I don't know what changes or what makes that difference. I couldn't do it with a six gauge. So you should be totally fine. Um, now, the drooling part, I know Elaine Angel, shout out for the second time on the show today, had her cheeks pierced and they were a little bit further back, I believe. And her salivary glands migrated into the cheek piercings, which are not dahlias, but the cheeks. And now she kind of leaks saliva out of those cheek piercings. Not like the holes are too big, but the salivary glands are mixed in there. So that's why we say if you're doing cheek piercings, stay in front of the molars. Um, but as far as dahlias, I've never heard of that happening before. Impossible? Not necessarily, but I mean, you should be okay. Yeah, I would say. If yeah. Uh, unless you were unless you were planning on stretching them very very big uh, yes I, I mean i have friends with like super stretch philtrums and libri piercings that um that can like you know drink straws and stuff <laughs> through them but and they drool out of those giant holes but yeah. why wouldn't you you know yep yeah for sure it's fun um all right connor nichols uh, Con counter counter oh, like sure. nose piercings not to be gross but snot comes out of my nostrils and not out of the actual piercings, piercings. themselves there you go. Same thing. So, Same idea. Yep. Uh, from Connor Nichols. Uh, hi, I'm just wondering about a third eye piercing, vertical bridge with a surface bar, and your thoughts slash advice. We've been talking. Or I, I just had a long conversation with Kelsey about these. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to say you have to have the right anatomy for it. And what I mean by that is a flat enough area where it's not too rounded because we're going to want to use a surface bar in there, not a curved barbell. And when you raise your eyebrow or do this, see how mine kind of does all the scrunching and, and so much movement? I don't think I could heal one up. Yeah. Now, if I move like this and someone like the skin doesn't move, you're a better chance of healing this up. And there has to be enough tissue where you can actually grab a hold of it to actually get the piercing inside there. So um, tough one to heal. Pretty awesome. That's my two cents. And Nova, being you just had that large conversation, let's uh, do you have two cents to add? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... And and also I see a question from Toasty Cheesy that says uh, they really wanted a vertical bridge but are worried about rejection. What percentage would you generally assign to a successful long-term bridge piercing? So I think that these don't work that well. Um, I most of the times that that I've seen them being done or or done, they've ended up rejecting even on people that had what could be considered good anatomy for it. Um, I it's a, it's just there's not a lot of tissue there. And, yeah. Uh, and and I I mean most of the people that I know that have them like had them for a while and lost them. Um, so I I think these are really tough. The rejection rate is really high. Um, I know Kelsey has like a surface anchor mm -hmm. in hers. Um, which this is like one of the only times I could see an argument for like using a surface anchor over. I agree uh, over a surface bar just because because there's so little tissue putting something in there that is like less invasive, I feel like might have a better chance, but yeah, I would say the rejection rate for them is high, which stinks because I really want one. So don't look at it as a permanent thing. Expect not expect, but hope for a couple years, maybe yep. a decade. And it's probably going to eventually come back out. Um, I agree. Like the thing is, is piercing is kind of a newer industry. It started in 1975. It's been around since the beginning of time, but in America, the first shop I think was in 77, they established in 75. 
And so it's been around for several generations. Now, the thing is, is all the younger kids want something new that no one's had before. And we all wanted that in every single generation of this piercing. And there's been a lot of experimentation. Now, the thing is, is if something worked, we would have kept it. You know, that's why the, the snake eye piercing, horizontal through the tongue, and like, everyone wants it. It's like, you can kind of heal it. It's, we found out it does a lot of damage to your teeth, a lot of damage to your gums. It's just extremely dangerous, and that's why we don't do it. It's not a new piercing. It's an old failed one. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's the thing with a lot of these newer ones, and it's like, oh, like, no one has this. I need to get this. There's a reason no one has it. Now, and there's always 1% of that population that can heal things up. You can say, oh, my friend has it, and they've had it for, like, 20 years. That's an exception to the rule. You know, chances of that happening to you are pretty slim to none. It could happen, but again, it's like playing the lottery. You yep. know, there's a chance of it working out for you. Odds aren't in your favor. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, I, I've been seeing recently, like a lot of people have been the hand web, uh, like oh, thing no. has been coming back a little bit. And like, I remember when I was 17, I thought that was the coolest thing of all time. And, <laughs> and, but no, it's, yeah, it just isn't viable. I okay, hand web piercing. I'm just gonna say this every door handle has fecal matter on it. <laughs> yeah, you're putting that right inside your hand. Oh, yeah, and you have a big open wound. That open wound's gonna be there for a long time. I've never seen one healed up looking good. Anytime they've ever healed, they're always like twice as thick, full of scar tissue, and gnarly. Like, look, it healed up. And I'm like, yeah, but it looks like crap. <laughs> yeah, not to sure. mention the crap that's inside your piercing now because it's on your hand. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's just a bad idea. I mean, like you get in your hand web, like, so you can promise me you're not going to put your hands in any of your pockets ever again and get it caught on things. You're not going to, you know, clean your butt. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you pick the right hand. <laughs> the for real. Hand, for real. I mean. There's so many strikes against it. It's just bad. Don't do it. But Don't bring it back. Don't do it. I'm not going to pierce your hand web. Agreed. Yes. Um, but yeah, the general, I, the general consensus on the vertical bridge, I think, is it's a slightly bad. different show today. It is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it, I, I think it's fun. Um, we gotta have we gotta have some ones where we talk about that sort of stuff too. We man. do, we do. Um, but yeah, the vertical bridge is awesome. Uh, but the, I think this would be one of those where I would try with this. I like. I, I think I'm going to eventually try with a surface anchor and see see how it goes. Vertical but, bridge, you're gonna have a scar. If yeah, you're worried sure. about scars, don't, don't do, do it. it. You're gonna have one. Yep, I, I have one of my really close friends, actually. She is, like, desperate to have this piercing. She's had it done, like, three times with different surface bars. Did it once with a surface anchor. And it just, she's been at it for, like, five years and just can't get it to stick. Um, and I empathize, but. And Lynn Lohide, she does the same thing. I've seen her bridge, I think, one, or vertical uh, uh, third eye a couple times now. Yeah, it's tough. Dermal comes, goes back and forth. It's It's a tough area to heal. Yeah, for sure. Even for professionals. For sure. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. We've got another vertical piercing uh, from Don Pugh. Uh, hi, Scott. Love your videos. What do you Thank think you. about vertical industrials? Vertical industrials, I'm a fan of them if it goes from the helix to the conch. I'm not a huge fan when it goes to the lobe because it sometimes can distort or pull the ear. Can you pull some of these up, Nova, so we can sure. show you what I'm talking about? Um, now, first of all, Vertical industrial piercing. Let me take a look at the ear because I love pulling the ears out. Um, this is a bad example because there's no ridge up here. Oh, we switched to that. Yeah, you see how... Yeah, I'll go back. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jump the gun. So, yeah, no ridge here, but you could get down to the conch. Now, if we we're trying to get to the lobe, it pulls the ear out completely unless your ear's in that natural state. So, normally, you have to have a good solid ridge like this. Ah. There's a good solid ridge, you know? So the ridge, and then it goes into the conch. Again, if the earlobe is folded out, you can go through the lobe. Otherwise, it typically goes into the conch. Can you pull up some pictures again? Because I know there were some lobes and conch. Yep, absolutely. You see some real beautiful ones, like uh, the one just to the side of it, the chain gang one. You see how it's kind of pulling up out to the right? That one there. You see how it's lifting up on the earlobe there? On the bottom, that's probably going to cause a problem, cause a huge rejection, a huge, huge scar. Most of those look that way. Maybe, like if you go a couple more to the right, it says my custom vertical from Reddit. I have a feeling they bent the bar on that one. It looks yeah. like there's like a little right angle or like a hockey stick bend. So that would be okay if you went that route. Um, 
Oh. And also, like, oh my god, that Reddit one right in the center there, piercing it. Yeah, that looks like that's a transverse lobe going the long way through the top of the conch through the bottom of the lobe. It could be through the conch. What do you think, Nova? Uh, it it look it does look like it's going through the top of the lobe. It does. Yeah, it does. But if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you see how the conch to conch industrial from auspicious body piercing. That's where it should come out in the back, not in the actual lobe. Yep. Yeah. So. But yeah, I think they're really cool piercings. They're kind of tougher ones to heal. Sometimes you um, you have to do some custom bending. You can see some of the custom bends in some of those to make it happen. This is my buddy, Joel Tron. Yes, yes. Super rad. Good job, Joel. But yeah, Conch to Conch Industrials or, or wow. That Stoneheart one is crazy. Oops. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yep, so fun stuff, fun stuff. Yep. Lots of different options there. But yeah, it's a, it's a different option. Everyone always thinks industrial has to be the scaffold, which is the side, the helix to helix. But if you can bend the bar and kind of get it in spot, you, you can tell that's all externally threaded jewelry and steel, though. Maybe. Other than that, it looks really, really cool. I'm, then maybe this isn't the right one because uh, Joltron wouldn't do that. <laughs> maybe his is Opal Heart. I thought he had another one called Stone Heart, but maybe I'm misremembering. Yeah. Anyways, cool. yeah, yep. vertical industrial is pretty cool if you have the right anatomy. It's a long heel. You're not sleeping on that ear for a long time. I actually did a vertical industrial on my friend Benny back in Minnesota, and we did a helix to rook to conch. So it was a triple vertical industrial, Whoa. and he's had that over 20 years at this point. It's amazing. Yeah, still there. Still there. They're fun ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a cheers from Swamp Ass to both of us. Cheers, swamp ass. <laughs> uh, Names are always so crazy and so fun. Yeah, they are. They're awesome. Uh, from SH Mellow. Hi, Scott. Fellow peers are here from Orlando, Florida. Uh, hey. Thank you for the education. I'm glad to help you out. Um, we should never stop educating ourselves. I know I don't. Stay on top of it to be the best we can be. And yep. that's with any profession, not just piercing. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, and we have a correction from Brent. Uh, one inch is 2.5 centimeters. <laughs> What did I say it was? One is two. I think you said one. One inch is two centimeters. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, you're absolutely right. I, I, it's not exactly 2.5. It's real close to that, but thank you for the correction. Or something. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. From well, I'm going to do my best on this name. Uh, Body Saba 3. Okay. Uh, let's see. Scott, would you recommend a reverse, period, a, a reverse PA or a Dido? Ugh. <sighs> Do you want to get kicked in the shin or do you want to get kicked <laughs> in the jaw? Yeah, no, I recommend uh, neither. <laughs> um, I, I do the Dido's over the reverse PA. I'm just, the reverse PA is my least favorite genital piercing. Um, instead of like where it goes in the penis and out the back of the bottom of the head, it goes out through the top. Now, typically a lot of people who have the reverse PA turn it into an apodravia, which is just vertical through the head. I think that's a far superior piercing and more comfortable than the reverse PA. The reverse PA generally wears a ring through the head. And like, so the penis has this big ring coming out the top. And I don't know, maybe it does for some, for some people, but I know doing, during the piercing, it's a really weird angle to get that needle through and it doesn't look very comfortable. I'm not saying Dido's look comfortable by any means, I got the hiccups again, <laughs> but I think Dido's, which is like the little ridge of the head, head of the penis. You do a little curved barbells in there, generally like a 14 gauge curved barbell. Um, pretty brutal, but I think it would be an easier heel and more comfortable once it's healed than the reverse PA. That's my two cents on that one. Awesome. Thank you. What do you think? Uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much the same. I yeah. Don't really kicked in the jaw or kicked yeah. in the shin. I don't know. They're both pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. <indeed. laughs> Yeah, they're definitely on the, the top but end. Of if, you're, if you're really considering the reverse PA, maybe look into doing an Apodravia instead. I think that's a, a cooler piercing, my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we've got one from Ursula's Odds and Sods back in action. Hey, uh, Ursula. Let's see. Could you talk a bit about the process of training the ears to wear heavier and heavier weights? Um, my current heaviest weights are f uh, 15 grams, and I only wear them for a few hours at a time. Sure, sure. Um. As far as training, it's not about training. It's about having the right jewelry because it's about weight displacement. 
you can have something extremely heavy with a large surface, like really heavy plugs, like heavy, heavy stone plugs don't ever hurt because it's pulling on a larger surface area. So the heavier the weight and the thinner the wire going through your ear, the more you're like to do that cheese cutter effect. Um, I'm really, really bad at knowing weights of weights. That sounds stupid when I say it like that. Um, <laughs> knowing the weight of certain ear hanging weights. Um, but I know the thicker the surface, the more comfortable it was for me. I had some really, really heavy, I think they're called Ari ear weights out of Bali, which is like a, a, it's a bronze weight. And they were bigger than anything I've ever seen. And I picked them up. I'm like, there's no way. But the wearing surface, I believe, was close to a double zero. And because of that large surface area, double zero is um, like six millimeters, five millimeters, something like that. Three eighths of an inch. So, but anyways, the large surface area allowed me to wear them throughout the day. Now my ears started getting sore where they attached up towards the top, but it never got sore in the wearing surface. Um, I've also worn the acorn ear. Can you pull up ear weights for me? It might help sure. me out a little bit. Bronze ear weights. Um, I've worn the ear, the acorn ones, which have a thinner wearing surface, which kind of pulled down in this, and those I could only wear a couple hours compared to the super heavy ones. Now, um, scroll down for me. We're looking, okay. There's the acorn ones. Scroll down a little bit more and go to the right bronze ear weights. Yeah. Those you see how the wearing surface is nice and thin, but there's a nice large weight on that top. That's going to cause a more painful wearing area. Um, now scroll down, scroll down, see if we can find something slightly thicker. There, and then engraved hinge clasp brass ears. That's going to have scrolled. You see where I'm talking about, Nova? Nope. Okay, go to the bottom right hand corner there. Those are the same thing. Larger surface area, rounded, is going to be more comfortable. Um, when there's a thinner, thinner weights, that's when it causes the issues. Uh, yeah. And even like those, uh, the dusty jewels, magnetic ear weight ones there, those have a smooth surface on the ears. When you're wearing something rough, that's also going to cause some problems. Now, if you look at the ammonite ear weights on the left hand side, a little bit more right there, those ones will cause problems over time because it's a thinner surface and the weight's pulling down, which gives that cheese cutter effect. So it's all different and it's what you're comfortable with. Um, um, can you type in Ari in front of bronze ear weights? A R I. I think that's what it's called. Uh, type in sea monster ear weights. Let's go that route. No, there's the Ari ones. The scroll down left, right, not right in between that one. Those are what I was wearing. Those had a larger surface areas and that's what, yeah, the Dayak ear weights. So that's, why I was able to wear, and that was really, really, really heavy. So it's comfortable comfortability. And when your ears start hurting, irritations happening, you need to take them out and change them out. So, yep. Worst thing, God, look at those ear weights on that uh, ear. Oh, <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. So amazing. Worst thing that ever happened to me is I was uh, at a piercing party many years ago, and I thought it'd be funny to put like uh, padlocks in my ears. And they were just smaller padlocks. My ears were only double zero. So it was like maybe a two gauge or a four gauge. And, um, after a couple of hours, they started getting sore, so I went to go find the keys to unlock them, and uh, I lost my keys. So I was walking around for hours holding my ears. I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? There's no way in, you're going to cut through that with my ear. It's, it was a scary situation. But my car keys were on that same key, keychain, so I eventually did find them, got my ears unlocked, and I was able to drive home safely. Don't use locking ear pads in your ears. It's a bad idea. <laughs> yes. It's a really bad idea. Make sure you know where that key is. I knew where it was, but I was at a party and they got misplaced. So it was yep. auto. So don't do it. Yeah. Number locks yeah. if you're going to do it and don't lose that number either. God. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. We've got a question from, uh, I think it's Shallon, S H L L O N. Uh, Shallon, Shallon. Cool. Welcome yeah. in. Uh, would a larger gauge piercing be more stable on average? I got my lobes pierced at an 18 gauge. And had lots of issues with them for over a year, but as soon as I started stretching, they calmed down a lot. I find that uh, for most piercings, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we we pierce at a standard size, which is appealing to the public. Everyone, no one wants to have a huge. Well, some of us want to have a huge plug in our nose, um, but most people want to have that that real thin wire or a nice small gem on there, and it's cute and dainty, and that's what a lot of piercing 
strives for. So we normally pierce at that minimum size to start off with. If you're that person who's like, oh, I know I'm going to be stretching. I know I want a bigger. We can pierce at larger sizes. A lot of shops have those larger sizes. We just generally don't offer it because I think it looks bad as a piercer. Like, let's pierce it bigger. Let's pierce it bigger. And it's like, are you trying to hurt me? And that's the <laughs> image it seems to come across. So we have our standard sizes. If you want bigger, it's really not that much more painful. Go for it. Yeah. So, but th bigger sizes are more comfortable um, for sure. When I was really young and I first had my earlobes pierced before I got into the stretching, the earrings sometimes had that thin wire and then the slightly thicker gold cheap band, you know, from like Claire's or whatever. And I found myself always wearing the thicker part through my ear and people are like, oh, you're wearing the wrong part of that hurt, that hurt. I'm like, no, that's where I want it to be. I liked it better, um, which was a sure sign that I was going to be stretching my ears at a younger age, but it's the thicker is more comfortable. Grab a handful of hair. If there's hair up there or a single hair, the single hair hurts more than the larger surface. Yes. Yep. You have, if you've ever seen the, uh, there in, I think the movie Spartacus, like the older one, they had the, the thing where the guy was holding the arrow and he's like, if you know, if, if there's just one of us, you can break the arrow, but then he holds like all of the arrows and tries to break it and he can't. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's just like when there's more, when there's more of whatever it is there, it's harder to, harder to break down correct correct so it's cool i want um, to say physics but i don't know if that's true or not <laughs> i don't know if it's physics <laughs> science like science science that's yep. the safe answer <laughs> uh let's see uh another follow-up question from arif uh last week i got my tragus and helix um i wanted gold uh but my piercer told me silver and gold is not good for healing uh it's better to use titanium uh what is your opinion I mostly agree. Um, gold can be safe to pierce with, but I have had issues with the weight of gold and therefore switched over to titanium. For instance, my eyebrows were pierced with solid 14 karat gold. The weight, I was getting bumps. It was sore, it, a lot of crusties. Um, and then I switched to the titanium and things just healed up. And I believe it's because of the weight of the piercing. So um, I'll pierce people with like maybe a titanium bar with maybe a gold top on there, but I don't generally like to start people off with solid gold right away. Maybe I would do it for a doth piercing with like a solid gold ring, but that would be about it. And I know I would do that because like we pierce with niobium and niobium's a heavier metal too, and that heals just fine. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm talking out loud and words just come out. <laughs> but yeah, that's my two cents. I don't like piercing with gold. Like if someone came in for a navel piercing and like, oh, I want to have the best. I need to have the gold. I need to have, like, let's start you yeah, off with the titanium. It's going to be healed in half the time because of the weight. And then on top of that, what if it doesn't work? You know, what if the piercing rejects? What if it's, you know, then you're stuck with a gold piece and you can always just upgrade in the future. So that's my two cents. Now, as far as getting pierced with silver, your piercer is hundred percent, right? You pierce with silver, like sterling silver. It creates something called silver salts in the body, which is very toxic. Um, it's going to oxidize on the silver and also cause a lot of tattooing on the skin because your, your silver is going to start turning black and that's going to absorb into the skin. And then you have to have tattoo removal to remove the miscoloration or pigmentation on the skin because of the bad jewelry. So there's a lot of factors. Titanium, in my opinion, is the best. At this yeah. point. At this point. <laughs> Who knows what the future holds? Yes. Um, Going to be piercing with vibranium soon, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never know. It's true. Uh, from Ethan Alexander. Uh, just started getting tattoos and piercings two years ago at 30. Uh, I said I was just going to get my lobes pierced. Now they're at double zero, and I have a nostril and eyebrow piercing. Never too late to start. Uh, Rook and Septum are next on the list. and I It's love never that. too late to start and famous last words. I'm only going to get this. I'm yeah. only. And it, <laughs> it got you like it got the rest of us. Welcome to the club. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I love it. Congratulations. Uh, and a follow-up from Mitchell. He said, indeed, it's never too late to get piercings. I got Tragus and two flats, Ford Helix and a Rook, and I'm 55. Excellent. Yeah, I'm uh, just about 50, and I'm not slowing down even a little bit. I remember back in the late 90s, I pierced a lady who was 86 years old. She got a nostril piercing on each side, and all she was worried about is what her grandchildren were going to say. And I was <laughs> like, this is the profession for me. This is pretty rad. I said, you have That's no awesome. problems. You're the coolest grandma ever. It's true. She had uh, blue hair, too. Not like age, like gray turning blue. It was blue. <laughs> I love that. And and I feel like it's getting more common. Um, I know at when when i was at like the last shop uh, that had tattooing mm -hmm. we had a ton of clients that like 
had no tattoos or piercings and then were retired and were like, okay, well, I'm going to get my entire body tattooed. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I saw that a lot and I always thought it was really cool. It is really, really cool. Another cool thing that sometimes happens is I get three generations to come in and get pierced where, you know, uh, grandma, mom, and then daughter all come in and they all want to get a bonding nose piercing together. It doesn't happen often, but it's pretty cool when it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, we've got a question from Emerson. Uh, hey, Emerson. Is it a concern if a lobe piercing is still crusty and bleeding after four months? A little bit. Um, there's a lot of factors. Generally, these are healed up in a month and a half to two months. I'm going to say inspect your jewelry. Are you changing your jewelry? Is it the same jewelry you got pierced with? Sometimes there's a scratch, a nick, or a ding on the jewelry. It could be an allergic reaction to the metal inside your body. If it's an earlobe, you could have steel or a lower quality metal, and you might be reacting to that nickel and maybe changing to titanium if that's the case. Um, are you wearing helmets? Are you wearing headbands? Is hair product getting stuck in there? Um, are you getting caught on a towel every time you dry out from a shower or bath? Are you cleaning it with peroxide or alcohol and still doing it to this day because you're never supposed to use alcohol or peroxide and generally your body should be healed up. So you should be done with all those crusties and stuff. Um, maybe work environment. Are you surrounded by chemicals? Are you working in a chemical factory where acid and stuff's getting inside your ears? I know it sounds extreme, but it's, you gotta be the detective and figure out what's going on. But number one thing is inspect your jewelry, see if there's scratches, dings, or irritations. Um, it could be allergic reaction. I would ask if you have problems with snaps on your jeans, belts. Um, sometimes people break out in a rash, maybe change the titanium. So that's the first thing I would say is change the titanium, go talk to a piercer, and they might be able to help you out. But yeah, some, something's not right. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a question from Dustin. Uh, is it a bad idea to use chain-type jewelry as your first jewelry for any ear piercing? I agree. Yes. I think it does, <laughs> yes. Yes. I definitely think so. I won't start people with chains. It's so tempting and it looks so cool, but crusties get stuck in there. It turns into a big glob. It's a bacteria trap. It's just a bad idea. It's just more to clean and um, start with the basic, heal it up, and then we can kind of start with the fancier stuff. Get crazy. Yep. Yeah. You got to learn to walk before you can run. It's true. You got to heal before <laughs> you wear the fancy. It's true. Yeah, yeah. I remember my, for my conch piercings, I, I wanted to put something huge in there, like immediately. and. Uh, and I didn't, and I'm glad that I didn't because I, even as is, I had trouble healing, healing them. Um, so I'm glad that I waited to put larger jewelry in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yes. Good question. But yeah, don't start with chains or dangles. Sometimes the dangles are going to get caught in there too because there's a little hinge in there, crusties. They get caught and like poking, kind of funny. It's just less chances of problems with more simple jewelry. It's true. Yep. And take it from my experience, dangles, especially in earlobes, get caught on everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So from Sunflower666. Uh, What's up, Sunflower666? Six, six, six. <laughs> uh, I recently got a conch to conch industrial, and the day after the piercing uh, started bleeding. Mm -hmm. Now, a week later, there's a huge hole where the upper bead is. Is this normal? You mean it's indenting, I'm guessing. That means you need a longer bar. Yes. Okay. Um, if there's a hole in the, the beads going in, it's either a severe reaction to the, the uh, metal allergy, um, but chances are they didn't give you a long enough bar and you need a longer bar. Um, and chances are if the bead's already going in, you might need to change over to a disc or a larger bead because the gravity of that pole is still just going to be falling down and that the bead's going to want to sink back in there. Um, if you're having a problem with that bead sinking in there, a longer bar and maybe have your piercer put on one of those silicone no pull discs and that'll allow the skin to close back up so the bead doesn't drop back into there. But you need to talk to your piercer and also start taking some sort of anti-inflammatory ibuprofen, Aleve or Advil. The more you reduce the swelling, the better it's going to feel and we'll get a better grasp on what size bar we should put in there. You're going to need to downsize in the future because you're already at that point, but you need a longer bar. Absolutely. But congratulations on the piercing. Yeah, they're a fun one. It's still savable. <laughs> uh, from Oaken Cloaken. Oaken Cloaken. Love the name. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Scott and Nova. How are things today? Good. Thanks doing for doing pretty good. Cheers to you. We're doing. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. Like Las Vegas, man. This last week has been so windy. Um, 
I'll be honest, I slept with my window open last night and all the dust came in, so I kind of had a little bit of a sore throat and I know that's what it's from. But other than that, I'm doing really good. Glad the sun's back out, the wind's died back down. Yep. Um, part of my shop, like uh, we have stairs going up our, sh- and we have these concrete, like big boards on the side of the stairs and those got ripped in half and ripped off the wall. That's how windy it was. I think they were saying 70 mile an hour winds. Yeah. It got to like 70 over 70 miles. Pretty crazy. I think. Yeah. It was wild. Pretty crazy. Las Vegas for you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sunny and windy Las Vegas. Oh yes. Um, awesome. So the first question they have, uh, something they forgot to ask on the live stream last time. Uh, have you ever re-pierced a client's earlobes or other piercings in the same spot before? And would you, would you, if the scar tissue is healed up well enough, uh, does it depend on what co- kind of scar tissue is there? Yeah, I absolutely have. And I do it on a regular basis. Um, people will lose their piercings and they want to get it re-pierced in the same spot. Now, you might have heard me talk about how the scar tissue is only 80% as strong as normal tissue. And that's only a factor when the piercing has rejected out. Like if you got your eyebrow pierced and you just took it out and it never rejected and we pierced through that scar tissue, it's not like it has that weak scar tissue in front of it. We're just healing up over that old scar tissue. And sometimes scar tissue can heal faster than normal tissue. I'm not sure why, but it it sometimes can. But if it's rejected scar tissue, it's a problem. If you just took it out and re-piercing an old spot, no big deal generally the type of thing is, is like you want to massage it. Like everyone always like feels their ear like, oh, I got all that, scar- I got that big bump in my ear. That bump is that fistula, that tube of scar tissue. And if it's real big and like you touch your ear and it kind of sticks out, massage it, break it down, get it to normal where it doesn't seem as big and it's going to work out better for you. The big concern is that like you do a piercing and if it's protruding, that scar tissue will stay there. So get your skin looking as normal as possible. And if it seems normal, go ahead and re-pierce it. Yes. That's a great one. <laughs> good question. Um, I'm always so impressed by all the questions you ask. Yeah, we get some good ones. Uh, I don't know. We've done so many of these live chats, and I was like, this is going to last like three weeks. Everyone's going to say, how do I get rid of this piercing bump on my nose? And I figured this is one after another. And like every week, you come up with new, more intriguing, deeper, and better questions. Props to all of you. The most amazing group of people ever. It's really funny are. because the moment you said that, somebody asked another really great question. I am going to... Uh, it's never, gonna, never ending. Gonna, I love it. I'm going to skip forward uh, because I, I, I do really want to address this. Uh, okay. And I actually have some personal experience with this. Sure. Uh, and it's what precautions do I have to take when piercing someone with lupus, uh, which is an autoimmune disease uh, that my mom has, actually. Um, so for what it's worth, I have never pierced her, um, but she is on immunosuppressants, which is something that's really common with people with lupus. Um, I... I we we've talked a lot about it because she she has been interested in getting pierced and is and would like to be tattooed but the general consensus is uh you know lupus is such a dramatically different disease from person to person it can affect people so so dramatically different i know i think they call it the uh the i think it was like the snowflake disease because every one of every case no two are the same yeah yeah um so it really depends on um it really depends on the severity of the case if somebody is severely immunocompromised and suffering uh, like a lot of symptoms and like are in the middle of a flare, then I would not recommend piercing them. Um, and that's that I, I, I actually asked uh, I, I asked her lupus doctor that <laughs> uh, and she said, yeah, she would not recommend getting getting pierced or tattooed, uh, especially in the middle. What of does a flare. a flare up mean? Um, so basically lupus is something that goes, you flare up and then you go into like remission remission. Essentially there, there can be some, um, some symptoms there, but, uh, basically a flare up and and what lupus is from my understanding, um, which I think I can talk about this. I actually interned at the lupus center when I was in high school or when I was in college. Um, so what lupus does and what a lot of autoimmune diseases do is they, they they take your your white blood cells um think that your organs or healthy uh healthy cells are actually invading invading cells that they need to attack so the immune system goes into overdrive and starts attacking itself essentially gotcha um which is why they which is why they prescribe immunosuppressants which does suppress your immune system um but and you need that immune system in order to heal a piercing that and also to get you know um to fight infection um, because like an infection in somebody with lupus is like serious because um uh because i i know my my mom's lupus is bad enough that like 
it's it's a long talk with her doctor on like whether or not she should go to the hospital because mm-hmm. she's on all on all these immunosuppressants that anytime she goes she ends up getting sick um so i would say definitely be be really cautious about it uh, make sure that they're they're not in the middle of a flare there aren't any real any, any real serious symptoms and you keep a very close eye on it absolutely with any sort of thing like that you should always talk to your doctor before getting pierced whether it's diabetic or you know like lupus i mean there's so many different things and they all affect things differently yep now most wounds and i think a lot of i don't know if a lot of doctors know this or not but most wounds are going to be closed right away that's what the scab does over the top Mm -hmm. but with piercings we're supposed to consider it to be an open wound for a minimum of a month because we're not allowing that wound to stay closed, which means you're more prone. There's a bigger window instead of one day of being an open wound where we can get an infection. Now you have 30 days. So the chance of infection is higher. And if your immune system is compromised and it's weak and you can't fight off infections, that's a bad situation. So safety first, 100% of the time, safety first. And I, I turn people away all the time. Like, if I don't know, please talk to your doctor, figure this out. If your doctor says it's okay, I'll do it. But until yep. you talk to your doctor, I don't feel comfortable doing the piercing. So yes, Absolutely. that was the best question of the day. <laughs> Hands down. I, I love when it's it gets one. that serious and like we can actually make a difference. And yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. Thank you very much for asking that one. And thank you, Nova, for being the expert on that and knowing I, what you're I it just yeah. so happens yeah yeah uh, amazing it's just so right happens. place at the right time <laughs> gotta love when that happens indeed but yeah gener- generally I mean like basic piercings like lobes and stuff you can generally do okay um but anything too crazy you just want to make sure you're not in a flare yeah symptoms. yeah but don't be afraid to talk to your doctor yep I that's that's the best yep. the best answer <laughs> um we have a question from Brent or no a comment from Brent uh, I'm about an hour from Toronto um, I, I always, I always review people on Google reviews or I would post reviews on Google reviews. Um, I only go to one piercer and I like her very much. My whole family goes to her. It makes a difference. And that's, that's what happens at my shop too. It's like, I end up getting the whole family and it's like, it's like the family doctor almost. It's kind of cool. Like they come <laughs> yep. in and like, I'm like, Hey, how's Brian doing? Or how's so-and-so I know I pierced there and it's, it's fun when that happens, but yeah, Google reviews. I bet that's probably the most common one across because everyone does Google, right? I think for the most part. I think for the most part. So Google reviews is probably the biggest one. Thanks for commenting on that. And yeah, you should always do your reviews. You know, one thing I've heard a lot of people say here in Vegas, we have some really, really terrible piercers. I'm not calling out names, but there's, if you go on like Yelp and Google reviews and people come in and like with messed up piercings, I'm like, didn't you look into the shop or like, yeah, but I saw the bad reviews, but I figured they couldn't be that bad. No, trust what everyone is saying. One or two bad reviews is not a big deal, but if most of them, 90% of them are negative, there's a reason. Everyone's saying, please don't go there. <laughs> yep. Or like, yeah. yeah, I got this $10 piercing. Why isn't it going well? <laughs> yeah. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. Um, you get what you pay for. Absolutely. Uh, from Deandra Dahl. Good morning, Scott. Thanks for keeping me company while I work. I'm glad to, I, I'm at work. I'm supposed to have my day off today. <laughs> Am I on the payroll? <laughs> Right. Well, congratulations. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being here. And we're glad to be part of your day. Absolutely. Uh, Lucian, uh, from Lucian. Um, this is an apt question since we were talking about Kwame needles earlier. Yes. Uh, are Amazon piercing needles safe to order? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll no. see soon enough. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Number one, because almost all the Amazon needles that I have received, and I've ordered almost every brand I can find on there. They all come in something called blister packs. Um, Try not to knock my microphone. Let's see if I can pull one off real quick. There we go. Bear with me. Okay. These are called blister packs. And basically what it is, it has a little label on the side and it says it's sterile. And it might have been sterilized at that point in time. We use steam sterilization. These can't be steam sterilized because there's plastic on the outside. So it's a different type of sterilization. These ones, wow, they sent out expired ones. These expired in 2021. Nice. So, yeah, from Amazon. So, normally these have a six-month six expiration date, and a lot of times they, the, the expiration date is years out. So, like, normally I'd buy something on Amazon, and I would say, oh, it expires in 2028, okay? But these ones are years old. So, yeah, if I got caught using these, I'd be in deep trouble because it's not sterile. And... 
a lot of people who get needles online actually sterilize it themselves as they need it because this is coming from another country. I'm not sure where. I don't know what last time they did a spore test, which is a test they do on their autoclave or sterilizer to make sure it works. There's all kinds of tests. So I don't trust it. And a lot of times these ones, the paper just peels up because and now it's not sterile anymore. And the thing is, is like, as you look at these and you're opening them up, some are open, some are closed. If they got wet, that means it's compromised. Germs can get in there. So do you trust Amazon needles? No. Yep, even Not if they were sterile. Dull and terrible. Yeah, that's even if they were 100% sterile. Um, it's still one of the worst needles. Yep, we, one uh, of them. One of them. A, There's a lot a, of bad ones out there. We're doing a video um, where we are taking pics with a microscopic camera uh, to look at the bevel of all the needles. And man, if, if just uh, yeah, wait, wait a couple weeks for that video to be out and, uh, and you will see exactly why you should never get pierced with Amazon, uh, with Amazon needles. And we're also doing another test where I have uh, kind of like a drill press type thing. And we're going to be piercing all the needles through a piece of leather with a scale on the bottom to show how much pressure it takes to get through that same piece of leather. So we're going to be able to test each of these needles and tell you which one does make a difference. And we should see a difference. I haven't done the test yet, but I can guarantee you there's going to be a difference. I would think. Yep. We'll find out. Agreed. <laughs> uh whatever the results are i'm posting them yes agreed uh we have a question from swamp ass uh my only question for today <laughs> is uh know. yeah same uh <laughs> how do i know my lobes are big enough uh i think he's he means for stretch jewelry uh for stretch jewelry he said for gauges and i also asked this before but i forgot what's your referral to a good jewelry website um say that again what are my ears big enough i think he's asking yeah if his lobes are big enough to like like if he, uh, maybe he has small lobes and he's just asking like it, can he stretch with smaller lobes? Yes. Yes. Um, no matter who has like my earlobes were removed. So mine just goes right to the cartilage. I even had mine pierced and stretched up to about a 10 gauge. They were still kind of problematic because it was pressing up against the cartilage, but everyone can get their ears pierced and stretched to a certain degree. When that skin starts getting really thin, you need to stop so it doesn't break through and you have two little flaps hanging on your ear. That Yeah, so you might not be able to get up to an inch. You might only be able to go to a zero gauge or a half inch. It's hard to say until you start stretching. Now, the thing is, is your ears, when you stretch, is like kind of like brickwork, where there's like the inner interlocking kind of brick pieces. And when you stretch, you see, these, see how you can kind of see through my fingers and there's little gaps in here? Those will eventually fill up and regenerate. So your skin almost regenerates. So when you see people with these giant lobes, they didn't have giant lobes to start. The tissue just kind of keeps stretching and going nice and slow with it. Now, when you stretch too fast, it breaks and there's lines of scar tissue and the scar tissue doesn't stretch the same way and kind of blocks it, blocks off the blood supply. That's kind of why I, my ears had to be removed. So there's a proper way to stretch and an improper with time, you should be able to get up to a fairly decent size, though. I, I really like that. I think you called it like a brick wall analogy. Yeah. Um, that, that was really clarifying for me. Could, could you show everybody that? Yes, yes. I'll actually draw it here. Well, let's see if I can draw, because there's going to be a couple different drawings here. First one's easy. You guys can only assume I'm... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't remember who taught me this. I think it might have been... The gauntlet course back in the day. Couple seconds here. I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> Speed art. I think we have a really cool diagram here. All right. This isn't for sale. I know I'd have to sell it for billions of dollars, but <laughs> okay. So your earlobe is like this one, a proper brick wall. Nice and secure, there's no gaps in here. When you stretch, your ear goes a little bit bigger and there's these little tiny gaps that need to be filled in with collagen and extra tissue. And then after six to eight weeks, it looks like this again. So you're just kind of slowly stretching the cells, the tissue regenerates so your skin gets a little bit bigger and a little bit longer. When you stretch too fast, you break a middle gap and all this inside stuff right here it's all scar tissue. And now you have all these breaks across your ear and that scar tissue doesn't stretch like your natural softer tissue like this. So 
nice and slow and steady. Does that help, Nova? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Nat- natural, stretched, and then the heel goes back to this. You rip, you create the scar tissue, gaps like this. And that's why your ear gets all hard and lumpy and blowouts and yeah. Yep, you got to take it slow. Um, I got to draw today. Yes. Uh, and like Pictionary, but more fun. <laughs> and uh, Swamp Pass, a referral for a good jewelry website would be bodyartforms.com. Yes. Uh, they're one of the few that is actually good. Uh, Scott, you always say that you can search by brand. And yes, and that's... Material and you don't go on to Body Art Forms and buy the cheapest thing you can find on there. They carry good quality and bad quality, and that's the thing is we're looking for good quality jewelry. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get some pretty decent prices on there. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's the only site I know of. Everyone else, all the other websites I, are in between people where like we're this company and we order from here and go to here, and you don't know the brand you're getting, and there's no guarantees. And a lot of those companies lie about the metals they're actually using. Like, oh, it's titanium or it's steel, and then all of a sudden it's like black. And like, you can't make black steel. It doesn't work that way. It's <laughs> painted or coated or something. So yeah, that's why I go to Body Art Farms is because it's the, more of a trusted the brands you're actually getting. Agreed. Yep. Um, well, we've got about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to try and do so a, quick today. Yeah, it did. I'm going to wow. try and do a speed round. I okay. swear I was looking, I, I looked at the clock and I was like, it said 47 minutes and now it says an hour and 50 minutes. Um, we have fun here. Yes, we do. I hope you guys do too. Uh, hey Scott, Dutch bros, mafia for life. Hope you got today's sticker. Hell yeah, we did. I did. <laughs> I gave Nova one too. I, I don't know where it's at right now, but yeah, Mine's we got downstairs. sticker. Mine's downstairs. <laughs> um, from Mitchell W., I saw your video on the Trish Nash Hidden Helix trademark. Is there any new info on it? Um, not much. Um, I, she's claiming that she invented it. Is that what you're... I, I'm guessing that's what you're asking. Is Maria Tash, like, invented the hidden... Ro- the oh, hidden it says trish nash i i guess it's, i guess oh she's talking about like the maria the maria, maria tash is i know yeah. she's claiming that she invented a lot of the stuff and i know it's been around way before that she may have come up with a style of jewelry but um I, no new information we're still letting the piercings heal before we add all the chains and get some final pictures in but they're really cool piercings we talked about her earlier in the show yep yep absolutely uh, got my other bray pierce first piercing inside the mouth and it feels so weird <laughs> it does doesn't it, does. it um you get used to it and also just like to let people know it creates something called nesting where the disc will probably go into your lip a little tiny bit it feels a little raw at first it's totally normal you want to pull it away from your gums and teeth so you don't do long-term damage so and make sure you downsize in the future give it about a month maybe two months and you can put a shorter post in there way better awesome uh, here's, here's a good question from oaken cloaken uh, if a piercer makes a mistake or if somebody has some kind of accident happen to their earlobe piercings, Oops. Uh, are earlobe, then are earlobe piercings more forgiving compared to other piercings, which are less forgiving and more forgiving uh, as far as fixing them? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if, you, if you pierce cartilage, um, it's, it's kind of hard to re-pierce it at a, a much different angle unless you miss the dot and you have to move the dot. Earlobes, you can almost re-pierce on the same time, um, the same sitting type of a deal. Um, when, I was, er, when I was fairly early in my apprenticeship, I, I did a second exit hole, actually, in a piercing that I wasn't, in an earlobe piercing that I wasn't super happy with. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I didn't quite, didn't quite hit my exit perfectly, um, so I, I adjusted and they healed fine. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely more forgiving than cartilage. Um, yeah, cartilage versus other piercings is definitely a, a, a lot worse because it's going to swell more, um, more trauma to the area, so it, sometimes it's a little longer heal before you can re-pierce it. Sometimes you can do it right away, too. It depends on the situation. But, yeah, earlobes are definitely more forgiving than cartilage. Agreed. Um, let's Love see. Gene. I Not lost anymore. my spot. There we go. Uh, hi, Scott. When do you know when it's time to retire a piercing? I've had a conch for over three years and it's just never really healed. I've been so kind to it, but it just doesn't want to calm down. Any oh. tips? That's tough. Three years is way too long. Something, either it's a work environment, you're sleeping on it, chemicals are getting on there, or change your jewelry. If you have a ring in there, change to the stud. The rings are just a pain in the butt all the time. Um, if you have jewelry in there, make sure it's good quality jewelry. Cheap, lower quality jewelry, like cheaper steels, people have reactions to, and they'll never, ever heal. I've had people have piercings before, and I change out to titanium, and they're like, whoa, I think I had a headache, and it just went away. And I'm like, I haven't realized I've had a headache for months. And allergic reactions are a serious deal. Get it out of your body if it's not right and find something you're happy with. Maybe 
as I say, change to glass or something, but glass is a little too small for the conch. So, but yeah, change to a stud, titanium stud. And uh, I don't know what you're doing for aftercare. Just make sure you're not getting chemicals in there. Otherwise, if it's time to retire it, retire it. Three years is a long run. You gave it a fair shot. But if you've never changed your jewelry, change your jewelry and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I know it helped me to change my jewelry. So uh, I had trouble with my conch piercings initially, too. Um, they were originally pierced at a 14 gauge, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up sizing them down, um, which we had previously tried sizing them up, and they still weren't happy. Um, so it, at least in this instance, um, we made like a kind of a weird guess that, you know, maybe, maybe sizing down would, would help. Um, but yeah, talk to your piercer also, if it's been three years, um, I'm sure they, they would want to know that it's, uh, three years is also in the window. If you're still wearing masks, the bands that go behind your ear, press up against conch and keep it upset the whole time. So if you're wearing a mask, that could be it. Maybe get a mask extender, which goes behind your neck instead of behind your ears. It's a factor. You got to look at all these things. But I can tell you, like the week after the mask mandate came out, our phones were going off the hook. Everyone's conscious were inflamed, yep. upset. And it's like, get, change the mask structure. Oh, yeah. Get that band off that piercing. I had to, I had to be so careful. Uh, when I got them, actually, like uh, we, used, uh, we used face masks a lot mm -hmm. to pierce. So I kind of had some experience with it. But man, I would get it caught sometimes i remember ah, lifting with coyote one time and he got it caught so bad that it uh he tore it out and had to had to find it it was a Ugh, rough time brutal <laughs> brutal yep um let's see uh, so, uh another question from sam um i'm stretching my lobes i'm a ballroom latin dancer uh and i'm wondering what the best jewelry to perform in is i know i wouldn't i know it wouldn't be likely but i'm paranoid of them flying out on the floor that could totally happen if you didn't if you had the like not the right kind of jewelry correct correct there's two cents here um two different things i should say not two cents if you go with threadless jewelry the push pin style they generally stay really well now if you're a ballroom dancer and you're wearing fancy clothes and you pull away and it gets caught it's going to get pulled out and it'll separate and go across the floor okay but if it's caught that hard kind of want that to happen but it might ruin the dance now if you go with threaded jewelry where the gem or the bead screws on there if it got caught it's not going to pull out but you're going to get caught but the thing is with the threaded jewelry is you have to check it to make sure they stay tight which means right before you go on that ballroom dance floor check your jewelry to make sure it's on there so it's up to you do you want the break free kind of stuff or do you do you want it to be secure no matter what okay. yeah yeah Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> ballroom dancer. Latin That's ballroom fun. dancer? Latin and yeah, Latin and ballroom dancing. Pretty I took epic. a ballroom That's dancing really class cool. in college. Actually. I respect all the arts. <laughs> um, let's see from Lucian. Uh if I were to get a vertical labre, snake piercings, and angel fangs, how long should I wait between getting them? Snake piercing. Which snake piercing are we talking about? Uh snake bites. Snake Sorry. bites, okay. So it's like either it's a genital, <laughs> snake <laughs> eyes, or snake bites. So okay. Um I hope that wasn't inappropriate. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, snake piercings. How many piercings? Uh, snake so bites? A, ver a vertical labre, uh, snake piercings, and angel fangs. So that would be five? Five piercings. Um, I generally don't do more than three piercings in one sitting. Um, I personally would do... Your lips are going to be so swollen. So you can do two, like your angel fangs and maybe your vertical, vertical abret. Right, yeah. So that way they're kind of separate and they're going to be able to work out better. And then maybe in a month or two, once you downsize and you're back to normal again, then you can get your shark or snake bites. Um, but you're going to be swollen. I generally like to do the upper and then lower or lower and then upper. But I wouldn't do them all in one sitting. I would do it in two sittings. Absolutely. And personally, I think it might be easier if you do your upper lip with one lower lip instead of all three on your lower lip, which would be a big fat lip. <laughs> It'd be a rough time for sure. <laughs> I would definitely wait until they were completely healed yeah. before getting Possibly even three second. sessions, but I think you can do it in two comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, let's see from uh, Pirelli913. Uh, hi, Scott. I got a double helix from Kelsey November 1st. That's my mom's birthday. Cool. Uh, and coming in on May 1st, six months to replace the jewelry. Uh, planning on getting them anodized. Uh, can you do an aquamarine or turquoise? I plan on doing an amethyst purple for one, 
an aquamarine turquoise for the other. Yes, First we can time. do the turquoise pretty easily. It's just once you anodize like that really bright neon green. Like if you wanted a green like this, uh, every time I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's tough. You did good like, the other day though. I did, but I mean that's like one out of like 50 are going to turn out that good. I can get pretty close to the really green. The teal's pretty easy to get. It's just that bright, vibrant green. So yeah, we got gotcha. you. Yep. I do also uh, want to say that um, we can't peer or we can't anodize jewelry that's been worn. Um, unless, unless Correct. it's processed, so you will need to buy new jewelry just because it once it's worn, it, it will contaminate everything else. Um, I think they said they wanted to buy new jewelry or change your jewelry with purple and yeah. Just so if but yeah, but if you're already wearing it, I can't re-anodize it because other people are gonna be wearing those piercings. So I'm taking your nose piercing with mm -hmm. boogers on it, drop it in some water, and then piercing someone with the next one. Yeah, yuck. So it's fresh jewelry in that thing every single time. So you have to buy a new piece of jewelry if that's the case. But totally possible. I approve. Yes, I agree. Fun colors too. Yes. Um, from Mala, um, I want to stretch my ears to 12 millimeters, but I'm kind of worried about blowouts while sleeping since I've seen some examples on Reddit. Is, uh, is that something that does happen at times? And is there anything I can do to prevent it? Blowouts from sleeping. That's kind of a new one for me. I don't think blowouts from sleeping can really happen. Blowouts happen from more of the stretch. Maybe, maybe people are going to sleep and waking up with a like seeing a blowout and maybe it's just like they've done the stretch and and then go to bed and wake up and see the blowout yeah. is kind of my thing and then also when you're laying down there's more blood flow to your head so if you just stretch and lay down and then all the blood flows going to that stretched area it could seem like it but a proper stretch shouldn't hurt um you should be able to get to that size without any pain um if it hurts you're going too fast minimum six to eight weeks between each stretch um sleeping doesn't cause blowouts it's, it's from being impatient, pushing the jewelry in too tight. So even if you if you stretched properly and you put the neck size in, it doesn't hurt. You should be able to sleep on it, and there's no chance of a blowout happening. So yep. I can't see any reason why sleeping would cause the blowout unless you overstretched and then immediately went to sleep and let all the blood flow go to that area, and which would have probably happened anyways. It's not from the sleep; it's from the overstretch. Yep. Yep. Correlation, not causation, right? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, Snapdragon uh, 420. Hello, Scott. Hope you're doing well. Um, let me see. Doing really we... well. I hope you're doing really good too, Snapdragon. I think we've good only name. got time for a couple more questions. A couple more. Let's so, get them in here. Let's see. Um... Cheers to you if you're drinking. Oh, yes. Um, here's a good one. Uh, you mentioned piercing with a larger gauge straight away can take longer to heal with cartilage. Is this also the case with soft tissue? No. Um, I've pierced a lot of large gauge earlobe piercings, like almost up to like, uh, between six and a zero gauge. And they typically heal much faster than normal tissue. I'm not quite sure why the larger gauge stuff sometimes heals faster that way, but it does. Um, I have no idea why, no idea why. I don't know if you're a piercer and you've pierced large gauge lobes. Tell me if you see a difference with this too. But yeah. 18 gauge earlobes compared to a zero gauge. Generally the zero seem healed faster than the 18. Makes no sense to me at all. Um, we have a question from Joshua Kennedy, who is a piercer. Uh, he said, I get a lot of clients, uh, that want multiple forward helix piercings during the same appointment. And mm. I often turn them down. I'm worried about swelling. Do you agree with me or no? Um, what I tell people is it's nice to get them all in the same sitting, but it's a rough, rough heel. It's going to be a year, year and a half before you're fully healed all the way up. And if you get them all done in the same sitting and you're a fast enough piercer where you're, you're getting those piercings done within a few minutes of each other, your angles will be on. The swelling is going to be intense, but they have to focus on keeping the swelling down. Now, my favorite suggestion, which takes a little bit longer, is if you're doing the triple forward helix to do the upper one and the lower one so the swelling doesn't put too much pressure on each other. And once the swelling's gone down and it looks normal again, then get that second one or the middle one done, which generally it makes it the easiest doing them one by one you're going to be dealing with three years of piercing expect a year healing process on each of those forward helixes um but yeah you can't pierce them once they're still swollen so either do it all at once and have a rougher slightly shorter heel spread them out and have a longer easier heel but they should be fine as long as you accommodate room for swelling and they downsize when they need to downsize yep i, I would. a lot of it's on the clientele if if they're going to be rough on their piercing, it's going to be rough no matter what. Yep. Yeah, I, I um sleep on it. <laughs> if 
for what it's worth, I like I I also understand wanting to get everything pierced at once, like healing three forward helix piercings or six if you want to be symmetrical. That's like five years of healing. <laughs> so you're not sleeping on either side forever. So yeah. don't get both sides done. Leave a side and then yeah, go back the year later. I would never do six in one sitting. God, yeah, it's just like putting the handcuffs on people for like and say you're gonna be wearing those for a year. Yeah, it's a rough time. Like yeah, it's too rough. But yeah, they, they do have a tendency to swell. Mine mine swelled a little later actually, mm -hmm. so uh, it had been going really well. But the um the the flat disc actually kind of healed into the tissue, um. So we had to had to get that out and put in a a longer, uh, longer flat back with a larger disc, and that usually takes care of swelling and everything too. I overcompensate on the forward helixes. I do. They swell more than most other piercings. So make sure you put in enough room. I mean, I've had people come in before with like paper thin forward helixes. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I look like, gosh, should I put a quarter inch in one? Like quarter <laughs> inches, itty bitty. And I would never do that. And I was like, if I put it in, it's still going to have over half the bar sticking out, but I still won't go that small because they're going to swell up to that point. Give the room and they're going to have to downsize no matter what. So give them the right size. I generally do between nine thirty seconds and five sixteenths. No idea on the millimeter thing, <laughs> but yeah. I um I think I have I, I'm I have thick forward helixes and I'm swollen right now, so I think I have a three eighths in mind. Um, yeah, but you overswelled and that causes more problems yes. and even more. So yeah, oh, yeah, I have done that before. Where I put it in too yeah, short and like having to go yeah. way oversized because of that. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, we will take one more question. One then, more question. Uh, then we're gonna call it. Let me pick a good one. It went quick today. Um, it Thanks, everyone, for being yeah. here. I really uh, love you all. Appreciate every one of you. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll take one from Ashley Scott. So Good last she name. Just, she just, yeah, right, uh, just stretched my lobes from 14 to 12 a couple weeks ago with no pain. Perfect. I woke up today with pain, seeping, and heat. Help, exclamation point. Help. <laughs> You're going to have to cut your ears off. <laughs> it's over. Don't do it. Don't do it's it. Over I'm for just you. kidding. Um, you said a couple of weeks and this happened? Uh, yeah, it says it's been a couple of weeks okay. uh, with no pain and then woke up today with pain. Uh, I, think, I think she meant seeping and heat. So I would Hopefully it's not on both good. ears, but um, I would say check your beads. Make sure they're in there all the way. If it's threaded, if it came unthreaded, that little gap in there can kind of cause it to pinch, and that could cause that problem. Um, if you have rings and they got twisted, you slept real hard last night, or if you're drinking, you don't realize how hard you sleep, sometimes that happens, piercings are gonna get really upset. But if you have studs in there, make sure you have the room for swelling. Um, might not be a bad idea to do ibuprofen, a lever, Advil, those are anti-inflammatories, will reduce the swelling. Sticking your ears in some cold water and will also help reduce the swelling and make it feel better. Um, the wound wash spray, if there was any sort of blood or crusties on there to kind of remove that crusties. But yeah, it's sometimes they act up. I'm guessing you slept really hard on it last night and they got twisted, torn. Um, yeah, because if you did a stretch and it's too much, it happens within the first couple of days. It doesn't happen within a couple of weeks. Yep. So check to make sure if you, they went from a 14 to a 12, correct? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, just make sure the studs are long enough or the rings are big enough. If you have a ring in there, I got to draw again. Get to draw again. Last image of the day here. Let's see how good I can draw. I'll keep you on this camera. You can see it a little better. All right. So, um, I need a new year. So, if you have a big ring like this, here's where the captive bead is, you should have only this much inside your piercing. Two thirds, like if you split this into threes, see how it kind of creates a flux capacitor that way. Old school movie reference. <laughs> so the top third should be in, two thirds should be showing. If it's half and half, that's too much curve through a straight piercing. And that's what's causing all the pumps and all the bumps and irritation and overswelling. So so if you have half the ring showing and you have a ring in there, you need to get a bigger ring. If your stud is in there and the bead I could turn so if your stud's in your ear and that much of your bead is inside your ear, you need a longer stud as well. You should have the whole bead showing outside of the actual piercing. Did I do okay on that one? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. So, and that being said, don't put anything else on your piercing. Alcohol, peroxide, neosporin, they will cause problems. And uh, maybe to go talk to your piercer if that's the case, because always talking to your piercer, seeing hands-on is always going to be the best answer.
That is where we're going to wind this up today. Um, as you guys know, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Um, make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe, and of course, keep putting holes in your body. We'll see you all in the next video.